Hello and welcome to Dash 28 Live. I'm your host Mike Atkins and today we are bringing you a fourth round match from It's Always Sunny in Panathor 2, The Electric Boogaloo, uh, between Keith Conroy and Shannon Shoemaker. Hey guys, thanks for being here. Hi Mike. And uh, joining me to commentate on the match, we've got uh, Britton Williams and Kyle Peach. Hey guys, welcome. Hello. And uh, you guys did, uh, let's see, the scenario for this week is push. Um, and you guys did something kind of interesting for your deployment. And when we get to deployment, uh, we can talk about it when when we get there. Don't let me forget to uh, to ask you. Um, but so as with all the other games in uh, It's Always Sunny in Panathor, it's going to be at uh, 1995 points with a special Thunder Gun unit, which these guys will point out when they get to their lists. And uh, speaking of lists, let's just dive on in and check out what you guys are going to be playing today. So up first, we've got uh, Keith's Basileans. I don't care how they say it's supposed to be pronounced. I'm going to call it Basileans forever. Go for it. Sounds good. Um, so five regiments of Palace Foot Guard. Um, two of them have defense four and two-handed weapons. One of them is the Thunder Gun unit, so it retains defense five. Also has Crush and Strength one and has the Paladin Defenders um, Elite Aura uh, for melee. And then two normal um, regiments of Paladin Foot Guard. Um, a Priest with Bane Chant 2. Two High Paladins on Dragon, one with Healing Brew. Um, Samachris, Mother of Phoenixes, and Julius, Dragon of Heaven. And that is 10 units, 19 unit strength, 1995. 10 drops. Big old 10 drops. All right. Big old 10 drops. <laughs> <laughs> A commanding 10 drops. Commanding 10 He's drops. He's got All three right. dragons. What do you expect? <laughs> right. Uh, and then uh, Shannon is playing Goblin. Shannon could, you, Shannon, could you walk us through your list, please? Yeah, so I took two hordes of rabble. Uh, one of them is my Thunder Gun unit. Three regiments of luggets with some magic items, um, just because I had the points. And then two regular mobbies pack. Down below, you'll see there's a Mag 1 pack as well, so I have three of those. I took two War Trombones, two Mob Pup Launchers, because the Mob Pup Launchers go really well with the luggets. And then I have two mincers, a flagget with Bane Chant, a Wiz with Bane Chant and Inspiring, and the special character Magua, and the special character Grup. All right. Oh, so that's 18 drops at 26 unit strength. Uh, but you guys are playing push, so mm, unit strength kind of doesn't matter all that much. Depends on who's holding tokens at the end of anything else. Uh, yep. All right. So let's now, thanks for walking us through those. Let's take a look at your UB room. Uh, and now you guys decided to do blind deployment, right? Right. Yeah, it was going to be convenient because Keith, uh, both of us have kids that we're running around with on the weekend. So <laughs> yeah. it's easiest just to do the deployment beforehand in case something came up today. Sure. Uh, can can you guys, for, so for people who, who've never done it before and don't know how it works, uh, so blind deployment basically means you guys don't take turns dropping you just each deploy your armies in a vacuum and then reveal them to each other at the same time. How, how do you go about doing that on Universal Battle? So you would start by, um, we each would load up the map separately in separate rooms. Um, we rolled ahead of time and I won choice of table side, so I took the top. Um, and then you go from there and you do your deployment at once and then you meet in the room before the game and you load it at the same time. Um, so it's fun because it's it gives you a lot of like speculation of like okay which flank is he going to be on what you know where should I put the tokens and um, it's also very convenient for having kids so it worked out really well for both of us. Okay, so you so you make your own room, you mm -hmm. load the map that you know you're gonna you're gonna play, you roll to see which side you're on, you drop all of your units and then you save that mm -hmm. as a game. Yep. And then you come together in one room and just load the saved games yes. over top of each other. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, so there's a fun thing if you guys ever want to to add a little spice to a to a standard UB game you're having with somebody, uh, maybe try out blind deployment sometime just to see how that changes things. Uh, all right, so Keith, you got to pick which side you wanted, and you picked the top there. Uh, I can see that uh, since we're playing push, you guys are using those red uh, circles as your push tokens. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and there's, of course, the one in the middle, and then there's two on each unit. Uh, now, for the terrain here, this is the map that everybody's using for round four. Uh, so for the forests, are, are you guys counting just the footprint? Or are you counting all the branches and leaves or what? Just the footprint. Just the footprint. Okay. So just the, just the off-white gray footprint underneath. Ignore yes. all the branches. Cool. Right. Uh, okay. And then let's talk about where you guys blind deployed then. So uh, Keith, you are up top. Can you walk us through your deployment starting over on the left, please? Sure. So I waffled back and forth a little bit about which flank I wanted to try to run the Paladins in. Um, I figured that he would go with the bottom left because of that giant um, batch of cover that his rabble can survive in for forever. Um, so I opted to also put my tokens on the left only because I have limited amount of units. Um, so while they hold the tokens and go through this gap on the left, they can still contribute. Um, and I didn't ex measure out exactly, but I figured that the rabble couldn't park themselves in front of there and couldn't fit through the gap. So hopefully my paladins can sneak through. Um, the flyers, I wasn't sure if I wanted to swing wide or not, or if he would concentrate more on the left flank. Um, but I gave them some options so they could hop over the terrain if needed, uh, which they probably won't based on how he deployed. And then I put some paladins centrally with some healing. Um, for the inevitable maw pup launchers that are coming their way. So that was okay, it. Cool. And these, and so all the way over here on the left, these are the stock paladin foot guard. Yes, defense five, and then okay. Samacris next to them. Um, mm -hmm. Normal high paladin on dragon, then the two-handed paladin foot guard with the thunder gun unit in the back, and the priest with bane chant two and heal three. Then okay. Samacris, and finally all the way to the right, a high paladin with healing brew. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, all right. Thanks for that. And then Shannon, can you walk us through your deployment starting over on the left, please? Yes. So on the left, I've got the unit of Magwans. And then next to them, Magwa, special character, one of the regiments of Luggets. And behind them, I've got the Maw Pup launchers. I figured with his healing and defense, uh, it wouldn't be doing many wounds from them. So I kind of set them up where I thought I could get some load, get some loading into the mm -hmm. Luggett regiments. Um, next to the Luggett in regiment uh, in the pond, I put my Thunder Gun unit, and like Keith said, it's just going to push up into the forest since it has Pathfinder and Phalanx specials from the tournament. Next to that horde, I have the, two, the special character Grup, and then I have the, uh, I think I put the Inspiring Wizard there. I actually will have to check and see. Looks like it, yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to do this from memory because the map is not showing. There we go. Now I can see the characters. Uh, next to the, those two characters, I have a war trombone and a uh, mincer, and then a regiment of luggets with mobbies behind, another war trombone and mincer with the inspiring bane chanting flagget. And then next to that, I have another regiment of luggets and mobbies. And on the right flank, I put a horde of rabble because I figured he would probably try to sneak dragons around the rocks and I could use that to roadblock for maybe a turn uh, to sure. keep him from getting into flanks. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks guys for, for walking us through that. Uh, good luck to both of you. Uh, have fun and uh, we'll be, we'll, we'll be watching, but not in a creepy way. And we'll see you guys. Uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys back here uh, when you're done. <laughs> okay. Thanks guys. Thanks. <laughs> Now, if I can figure out how to exit. That's uh, my big red one that says leave studio. I can't find. There we go. Sorry, it's down at the bottom. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. So let's bring up their clock. Yeah, we don't need an right, so, extra commentator. We've got a clock. There you go. Right. <laughs> um, so what do we think? They're playing push. They did blind deployment. I mean, Keith, Keith, Keith clearly had a, a plan of, I'm going to sneak my regiments past this piece of terrain on the left. Yeah, yeah so I mean, he first, did. Oh, go ahead. I, I mean, first, we should talk a little about Keith's bullshit list. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, yeah. Keith brought three dragons. He's also presumably going first because he just won the roll-off. 1995, three dragons is a little yeah. bit of a dick punch. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's 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 got its weaknesses. At 1995, when you go that hard of a skew, 
you're you're missing a lot of utility, a lot of flexibility. So we'll see how well he uses those big expensive pieces. Um, sort of as expected, he's pushing his push tokens up to. Um, I assume he's just going to move those in a moment, but we'll we'll see. Uh, interestingly, he's not pushing all the way up. It looks like he's. Is he trying to stay out of Magua's 16? Or the Mob Beast's 15, maybe? But he didn't push uh, 10 inches straight forward like I no. kind of expected him to. No, he needs to hold back a little if they fit through that gap. Which... Yeah, he is, he's staying back the, the 15, so that, that'll that put him out of the 6-inch charge range with D3 wild charge that the Mob right. Beast has. He's also out of the character's charge range, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um yeah, plenty. But to this sneaking around the left, I feel like it's not a terrible idea for Shannon to just ignore that, take the middle and just win playing up, you know, 200 yeah. whatever points. Yeah, I mean, he is already really low on units. Yeah. <laughs> and those two aren't in a great spot to be able to redeploy and be relevant if Shannon just lets them walk across the board. Right. Like, yeah, once, once, once they're over there, like they're, they're done for the game, right? Like that's, that's what they've yeah. done. Uh, the, like if the back unit pivots, moves five and then turns three moves to threaten into the woods, maybe it's not great. No, they're, they're relevant. I mean, if, if he does not block them with something or have stuff, keep an eye on them, then next turn they can just move forward the, the front one can move forward and the back one can pivot to the inside or even follow it. That's what I was thinking, yeah. And they're they're relevant. Like, I mean, he's got enough stuff over there um, unless they fully bail out. Uh, my guess is that he's going to have to sort of... I wouldn't say deal with them because they're, you know, not that scary, but he's going to mm -hmm. have to be aware of them. Um, yeah, it's... There's a lot of layering going on in that middle from Shannon, which is super interesting, especially mm -hmm. from a blind deployment. I mean, at, at one point he has um, the war trombone followed by a mincer, followed by um, the mob beast. Mob beast. The mob beasts, yeah. It's like, and and rarely in Kings of War, especially at 1995, do you see sort of three units deep. It's <laughs> goblins. I know, I know, but. Mm -hmm. Still, and I I was actually wrong about how fast Magua is. I was thinking speed eight, but it's yeah. also six with wild charge. So like the mm -hmm. dragon, he camped just out of the individual's maximum charge, which is yep. probably the best. It's not a great charge to take, but whatever. Yeah, I mean Keith Keith definitely has a huge speed advantage. Oh, with half his can, army, with, with with half his army, right? <laughs> um, but the half that will score, um, not so much. Yeah, he's he's slow and he's fast. There's no gradations um, yeah. in between. And, it, mm -hmm. and I mean, you, you see exactly how this this army can work in a lot of scenarios. It's like, well, you've got all these fairly hardy units of paladins that go score the points. And then you have these flying threats that just run interference, kill things, get in your way, keep you from making any progress. Um, and that's it. So I guess we'll see if that, that works out. Goblins have a pretty good number of tools. You can only fit so many in 1995 points. Yeah, I mean, um, goblins sort of get a real army in 1995 while everyone else is making big <laughs> sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, they, they still get their sort of classic, here's some fast parts, here's some right uh, tar pity parts, here's some hitty parts, and some artillery, and some utility characters. They kind of get all of that. Um, just a worse... Worst mm -hmm. version of it. Um, mm -hmm. Sure. No, there's nothing. A... Go ahead. Go on. Oh, I was going to say nothing of Shannon's is actually super fast, though. No. It's all mid mid tempo. Mm -hmm. Like, um, he has the the Mogwans and the Ma Beasts are super flexible because they're, you know, Wild Charge D3 nimble. Um, so they can they can get where they want to go, but from a right. straight up like long distance or flank, 
They they don't outrange things. No, they're not. They're still only speed six, right? Yeah, they've got but a they lot hit, of tools, but and everything he has, most of his combat units hit decently, but aren't. There's no real hammers. Um, you know, even a blessing of a god legate gang against defense five is is not Super not anywhere near hammer status. No. And Shannon doesn't even have doesn't have a bane chant, does he? Yeah, he does. He does. He's got two bane chants. He's got a wizard with bane oh, chant. He, he has a wizard flag. and the flag. The flag has okay. got the loot. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so that'll help. But he's still just bane chanting twenty dice on fours, which is fine, I guess. Possibly plus plus a mop up. Uh, does the bane chant work on them? I don't. I'd have to look at the mop up rules. I don't. I don't think it does, but it adds. Uh, it adds more attacks, mm -hmm. which I don't think I don't think those get either the units elite or uh, Bane Chant. Why isn't it in the list? Uh, okay. Because he didn't actually take Maw Pups. Uh, he just took the launchers. Okay. <laughs> He just took launchers. He just took the launchers. Just planning uh -huh. on loading everybody up. Interesting. Which he even said. No, I kind of disagree with that. Um, uh, I think I he see. absolutely should be chipping away at dragons with his shooting. But. I mean, Steph, Iron, Steph, Iron be a tough Resolve, game. Radiance of Life, Heal. Sure. Two mop yeah. up launchers. Yeah, you're, you're I, I guess jacks. because he has so little of it. It's because he has so little of it. You're right. Like, sure, the turn that both war trombones focus on something, he might as well toss the, the oh. mop ups in as well. Is but... he going for. Okay, now I'm confused. Uh, he's just rolling his uh, wild charge. Oh, that one is wild charge. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> so that is that is the end of Keith's uh, first turn, and we're over to Shannon's movement phase now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I, I guess kind of as expected, Keith just sort of moved everything up, put the dragons in position where they can possibly jump over and threaten things next turn, uh, and then wait. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not like Shannon has enough shooting that Keith has to rush him. Right. Um... And and time time is kind of sorta on Keith's side if Shannon hangs back because really all he has to do is walk forward far enough to pick up the middle token and then back away with his paladins and right yeah so Shannon's game plan is seems to be going all in on taking the middle token and getting across the table with three yeah which is reasonable yep. Yeah. Now, normally, normally you would look at this kind of matchup and say, like, well, the goblins are in trouble. And I think just on lists, I think like Keith, Keith definitely has the edge just purely on lists. But, like, Shannon's a really good player and has a lot of experience with goblins. So, um... Well, the thing for me is that while Keith has high quality of attacks with the dragons, he has very low volume. Yeah. And low volume of attacks against dash 15 luggets mm -hmm. um, luggit gangs against just goblins in general yeah it's like, like there's a very real possibility that there are no good charge options ever because none of right. these things are like great you get lucky and you kill one of them and then <laughs> three three units attack back with two bane chance oh, and a mob pup reload and suddenly your dragon's in trouble and every one of these pieces is basically non-sacrificial um right. except True. maybe the paladins a lot of the paladins are but they're slow exactly right right the fighting the fighting will be over before the paladins get there in a lot of cases oh, i mean only if keith overcommits, which i don't think he's gonna do but sure. it is that sort of where he moves up this vanguard of elite scary looking things while the rest of his foot sloggers come like jogging forward going wait for us we're the ones that actually need to do something mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah so it's the sort of thing where um 
someone who wasn't experienced playing against flyers might leave a flank open, might not realize that the dragon can just fly behind you and spin around and breathe on you. Um, but I think Shannon's smarter than that. So I'm, I'm interested in seeing what he does to, to give, like, like you say, it's possible that by the time Shannon's done moving, Keith will have no good charge options. So I'm interested in watching Shannon move this many units in such a tight, layered up formation and leave and hopefully leave no good charge. I mean, I think, I think so, that's what the Mobby's packs are there for. Like I, those, those, you, think? you can leave a gap in the Mobby's packs if anything lands in it with nimble and a decent charge. They'll definitely ground something and they'll do some damage. It's so I'm looking at the left here and I'm curious because there's just space for that dragon to fly 20 and pivot the yep. way Shannon seems to be moving currently. Currently. Yeah, but what's he going to position to keep that from being a thing unless he totally changes how he moves the luggets and Magwans? Well, Magwa, Magwa and Joe, even though they're on a square base, they are an individual. Right, so they could spin around and fight yep. the dragon, but they won't kill it. No, but and, they'll hurt it. But they'll yeah, hurt but it. If, an, yeah. In, if an individual hits the dragon not to the front, the dragon probably just doesn't care. So Some my, my, thought, my thought is, is that he then turns something to face it, that it's not going to get around because it's lost its... Sure. Point, yeah. That might be um, why he, maybe he does play that defensive game with the Rabble Horde. Either the Rabble Horde or the um the Mobbies the Mobbies packs. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I'm viewing the Mobbies packs right now. We'll see how they ultimately move, but they're sort of the sweeper. Because Yeah, that's have, a good point. One of those Mobbies packs. Probably a 14 inch charge range. They're nimble so they can get around weird stuff and they'll they'll stick a wound on anything. So, mm -hmm. I think the danger and the one I'm not really sure by is on Keith's left or right. That dragon uh, on the far side, if it had been a little, a tiny bit straighter, this one? a little facing south, then it could have also done the same sort of thing we're talking about on Keith's right or left. Where? Um, Keith actually had trouble with where he placed it. It couldn't fit. Like, yeah, it, he he had to fiddle with it a bit to get it to a spot where it could fit, and also yeah. was more than ten inches away from the rabble horde. Yeah, because I just if it had just, I guess it didn't have the room, but it would have been great if it could have been facing, you know, half an inch back and a little further facing south, and then just be able to go down and turn ninety. Because then is you can put it? both dragons into the backfield looking at each other, which is just a scary spot to be. Um, mm -hmm. But he is, is he is pushing it up. And so the dragon is definitely in the front of his luggets with the tokens. I can't tell whether Julius can see them around the rocks or not. Um, but he probably doesn't want he probably I doesn't want a double charge so. on, his to, on his token carrier on the second turn. That's a good question. I think Julius can, but it's close. Plus, that and probably now, now he's got to do his best to uh, not leave any gaps. Right. Yeah, he's being very careful to keep because the dragon's in the flank of uh well both mincers. Mm -hmm. He's being very careful not to give it a space to land. Yep. I'm not sure he can see the mincer on the left, but it definitely could on the right, but there's just so much stuff there it has nowhere to go. Yeah, I'm 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 not sure he can see the one on the left around the rocks. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, and, and Julius is, is in where... the front of the one this in the This is middle. where Julius becomes a little bit interesting with his mm -hmm. normal large infantry base. Right. Mm -hmm. He is a, a 40 mil. <laughs> He's a 40 mil dragon. Speed 10, defense 6, um, you mm -hmm. know, 8 attacks, dash 16 nerve, dread. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of rules mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and a lot of sort of punching power. 
for a 40 mil base. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know that there's a large, he's 315 points. I don't know if there is more of a points to frontage, <laughs> like to total base <laughs> right. frontage. Because Shobik, Shobik's a 50, right? Yeah. Is Shobik a 50 or is he on a 75? Shobik's still small. Is he? Okay. He's, I think. I don't know. But um, I can look that up later. But I think he might be the most points per, like, frontage. <laughs> I'm wondering if Julius just flies over and kills some mob beasts. Oh, he doesn't have range. Never mind. No. So Shannon's keeping him out of Julius' 20. Okay. Hmm. Chris DeGrow with the save. 50. Oh. I should probably be looking at the chat. <laughs> Yeah, I'm playing but... on uh, seventy-minute clocks like everybody else uh, in this event. And I think I said I'm... this last time, but seventy is a long time to play nineteen ninety-five. It is. It's plenty of time, uh, but I think we're likely to see Shannon take a lot more clock time up than Keith, at least early <laughs> here. Like he's got a, he's got a lot more stuff to move, and he's got to yep. be very careful in high position stuff. Yeah, one of one of my first. Not my first clocked GT. My first clocked GT, I played dwarves that did something in every every phase and basically edge of clocking out every game. But my second one, I played an undead army with three giant flyers and suddenly had a lot less clock problems. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Weird. Because you have almost no units to move. They can move a lot right. of places and you're right. usually the one asking the questions. Um, right. <laughs> so it, it felt good. It felt good to be like, I'm going to put them here and then make you right. noodle for 10 minutes. Right. Um, sure. But I'm going to fly behind you, turn around and look at you. Now you deal with me. But this is um, the reality is there are so many heavy flyers and it is so easy to make a heavy flyer oriented list within Kings of War. Um, it's a pretty <laughs> open design system. So you can. You can do it with a lot of armies. So as a good player, as a player that wants to compete at top tables, um, you need to be able to deal with heavy flyer armies. This is an archetype you will run into, um, whether they are literally just dragons or they are, you know, flying heavy or heavy cavalry. Um, You have to have flyer defense, whatever that is, whatever Mm -hmm. form that takes. And you have to have a cool head that doesn't panic when they start to tighten the noose. Right. I'm pretty sure Shannon has that. Um, And it'll be interesting to watch him deal with this because at 1995, this is a weird thing to deal with. I don't Mm -hmm. like this. I don't, he needs to pivot those rabble harder if he's doing this. What do you mean? What he just did. <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, Shannon had previously moved the rabble in such a way that they weren't zoning out the dragon from just flying mm-hmm. over him, but he corrected it. Yeah. yeah. With um, just barely without getting flanked by Julius. I think he may be moving on to his shooting phase now. Does he have shooting? Oh, he's got a lightning um, bolt. <laughs> Yeah. Got Lightning Bolt 4 on Magwin and Joe's. And he's got uh, a Wiz with Lightning as well. But can see that dragon? Yeah, he's got it. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be one wound. But, but that's going to iron his off to zero. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, whatever he wants to shoot his mop up launchers at, which I'm guessing are going to be his own nuggets. Yep. I mean, are these clocks currently right? Like, 
It actually yeah. looks like Shannon didn't use much of his time. I think. Did he start late? No, I think Shannon mm-hmm. was green. Yeah, I don't Shannon's, know why the clock switched Shannon's green. to blue I think right they, now. I think they've they've switched the clock already. Uh, do you do you roll to load your unit up with uh, my puppy? You do, don't you? I don't know. How? Yeah, you roll your three dice, and if you get at least one hit, then you get a mop up. Mm. Um, so I don't know why they switched the clock already. I think Keith just knows he's going to have a lot of clock left. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like, whatever. Okay, yep. So well, I think what happened was Shannon realized that he actually can't target a lot of things with his mop-ups because of that indirect. So he just he shot just, the dragon instead. He just shot the dragon with both of them, yeah. Mm-hmm. And a seven for nerve. It's not really going to do anything to it. But he did put a couple of wounds on it. So that dragon will have... uh, What should I in resolve? But some damage on it. He got a lot of hits. Iron resolve and then um, if Sam or Chris hangs around there again, it's gone. It's gone. And then right, he and he couldn't load up his own units because they're indirect, and indirect things can't shoot at things within 12 yeah. inches of them. Right, And then neither one had arced the slashing luggets, which I think Shannon tried to shoot at as well. Yeah, that's the unit he would have wanted. Yeah, the ones carrying his tokens. And he probably can't see the vicious ones. Yep. Uh, so that pops us over should. to uh, the top of turn two. All right, well, Keith does not appear to... Well, he won't be using Radiance of Life on the dragon. It looks like he's going to jump over and try to burn those the yep. Magwans units with the with Samacris. I mean, great. Like, yeah. Samacris is absolutely yeah. annoying. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. One of my sort of... It's, it's one of my jealousy units. I'm like, I would so badly want Samacris in every other army I play since I don't play Basilia. Um, and and whenever someone okay. like makes a list without Samacris, I'm always... It, and I know there's lots of good reasons not to include it and whatever, but it's one of those where I'm like, she does everything. Why would you not have her in the list? She does um, do everything. But yeah. Why, for, why, know, why would you ever get a Phoenix when you can get her unless you've already bought her and you want another one? Yeah, it's... That's, so yes. she, that's she exactly hit, right. Uh, a piercing one fireball that can do some real work on Moglins. Um, mm-hmm. And <sighs> they're depending on what this now. dragon does, if it's breathing too, I don't know. I don't know that that's what he's going to do with it. But oh, if I would it love does, it. if he can find a good spot for it, yeah. right? There's nowhere he does that that's safe. Depending on, he's kind of seeing what the luggets roll at that point, which is less than ideal. I yeah. just i I like the idea that he has all these big scary dragons, and they're just going to breathe on things the whole game. Mm-hmm. I know he's probably not going to do that. It would just crack me up. <laughs> they're goblins. We don't need to fight them. Just yeah, you know, stay out of the front and keep you shooting. You don't need all that crushing. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You don't. And if Shannon's doing a good job to avoid... Okay. Yeah, yeah. No. Maybe not. I mean, the, <laughs> this is what the Thundergun unit's doing, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. Please please come please come mess with the unit in terrain that has phalanx. Right. Well, I mean, that doesn't work that way, but just in general... Ooh. Is that a charge we are trying there? It looks like he is. That's a legal charge. That's a legal... Oh, no. Can Julius see him? Is that a legal double? Uh, oh, that's close. Um, that's close. Julius, I don't know. He can probably see them. That was kind of my... Yeah, and here comes the... the looks like the was no, <laughs> yeah. Here comes the stick. Uh, and I think that's going to be a no. 
I think they're concluding no. Yeah, because you're over the rocks there. Yeah, so I'm I like, so. no. Okay. He wants it. He's he wants it. He definitely wants yeah. it. You can tell, like, you bring out that stick and it looks immediately like it's not going to happen. Uh, but you keep checking. Like, you check a little okay. closer. It's like, you, you want that. Try so sliding it back and a... forth. Maybe maybe the terrain will move a little underneath me if I just keep sliding back and forth. Um, yeah, because, like, allowing an accidental double charge is exactly what, what Shannon doesn't want in turn two. Um, do you still take this as a single if you're Keith? The dragon can probably I mean, kill mob beasts, right? They're only a 12 14. Yeah, but if it doesn't, then it's going to get flanked by them next turn. And Ooh, that's a good charged point. in the front by, by, the, by the other ones. By the other ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're, so, they're native crushing. Um, they're not. Uh, they're, so they're it's like not like he's taking away any thunderous. Yeah. They hit just as hard on a counter as they do on right. a charge. And they're vicious. Mm -hmm. They're great. They're great. Oh, man. what? Woo. Okay. Spicy dragon moves. And just bomb Julius into the middle of the line and say, here, deal with me. Well, then, trombones will just spin around and shoot at him, I'm sure, but they're not going to do a ton. Yeah, they do his defense six. Yeah. Okay. Um, Which way is he turning? Oh, he's turning this way. Okay. Oh, maybe not. Oh. I mean, I would kind of like looking at the rear of the Thunder Gun unit doesn't seem like a terrible spot to be. Um, but you are going to get a couple of trombones and possibly a lightning bolt. And? In trouble. Yeah, and you probably don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you say that. I say that. Yeah, but if you do this, then like basically it's like is there is there any reason for Shannon to not just take his entire middle line and just head for the other side of the table as fast as possible? Um and just head head first straight into some paladins. Why not? No, but Shannon was gonna do that anyway. Right. And you still have your dragon on the other side that could shift back mm -hmm. towards the middle and provide a little protection. Um, plus okay. those are I mean those are paladin foot guard I, yeah. they are. They'll, can that, they'll grind In a can world that of, dragon on the middle do a 90 degree pivot and end up like safe from the luggets and magwans and in the woods it probably can't do all of that right uh I no, it, well I'm not sure if it can turn far enough to get out of the rabbles arc arc and they've got yeah it doesn't quite i think if you were on a 50 maybe but not on a 75 and obviously if you had pathfinder that would be easy but he doesn't but like paladin foot guard um and these are the paladin foot guard that have two hand weapon yeah so um that's a, a blessing and a curse in this army because now the luggets are really hurting um they're they're damaging you on threes um, mm -hmm. which is a little scary, but like 15, 17, 12 attacks on threes, they'll actually, I mean, when you're fighting goblin, goblin regiments, paladin foot guards sure. certainly have a relevant number of attacks. Right. And they've got a priest with heal three and bane chant behind them. And they got iron resolve. So like, no, they're grindy. They're not going anywhere right. fast. Um, they are only defense four. So yeah, there's that. And with Luggets and Mincers, that's a problem. And they are also right. elite in melee with the aura from the one behind them. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's a great fight for the goblins mm -hmm. to get in, but, you know, it's it's one of those, like, we won't we won't last long at that range against those Star Destroyers. It's like, well, we'll last longer than we will against the Death Stars, so, you know. <laughs> there you go. All right, so it looks like the dragon is sticking with that charge, which yeah, which is risky. It is risky. The payoff I don't, love it. I don't love it. You don't, you don't love it? I, no, no I, I just. 
I mean, it's 10 attacks, right? Um, on threes. On threes uh, and twos with... He's not even elite, is he? Or is he? No elite. I just... I don't love 10 attacks against a 12-14. No, and honestly, even... I know I just said the payoff is big, but now that I think about it, even if he does get the kill, he just gets charged by the other one. Yep. Sat down and then other stuff turns. Yeah. And like, you don't really want to have to have like flown Julius back here to have him go rescue the dragon the very next turn, you know, Mm -hmm. to have, to have cleaned up Shannon's backfield while the rest of his army has moved on to, play the part of the game that he needs to do to win. That's not bad. If after turn three, you've cleaned out the backfield and have three dra- two or three dragons looking at the back of Shannon's main line, that's a pretty good spot to be in. I just think there's a high risk. If there is a very high not, risk. If he does not kill that unit, mm-hmm. he is getting, what is that, 36, 36. attacks between the two units yeah. on threes? Threes and fours so with vicious. Uh, plus, plus at least one bane chant. I would guess I'm, he's got two things that can cast bane yeah. chant over there. Plus the flag one's going to be bane chanted. It's bad. It's just, it's just like there's a chance that dragon goes bye bye, and that's a big chunkier army. For I don't know, maybe I'm just too risk averse here, but it it feels mm-hmm. like he could have improved his position versus taking that charge. Um, Sure. So, and we'll see. I mean, he might just like it's an easy game if you roll a ten on nerve, um, and if he just like spikes that nerve roll, takes him off, and re- reforms. Uh, True, but like you're you're not going to. Then devastate he just gets charged unit. by the other ones. Yeah. Right. You're even even like a snake eye situation. It might be the sort of thing where like, well, I'm going to get flanked by him. It's like, yeah, but if I do enough attacks to devastate them, and then roll snake eyes, who cares? He doesn't have enough attacks to devastate no. them. Um, so. Like anything other than a waiver or, or or route is getting him flanked with all the attacks. Like, yeah, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's great. But maybe this is just how Keith plays this army. Maybe he's like one of the dragons is sacrificial, and when you think I put that one in a vulnerable position, I've actually just positioned the other two to do work. When yeah, you, I know. When you I know resources Keith. to get rid of it. Uh, I know Keith for a long while was known for his herd army. Um, mm-hmm. And I only saw a few of his games. One game I saw, he did a very, very strong tactical sort of masterclass of using terrain and hiding and waiting and sort of like baiting out the opponent until his sort of fragile units could do the exact thing they needed to do. Um, but this one, he feels very much like all go. He's being very aggressive. Yeah. And and I like it. It's fun. It's fun to so, see someone just put the, the pedal down and turn so two have I mean like besides his artillery and one unit of like mincers, his dragon is basically as close to the backfield as anything else. All right, so a little bit of shooting against uh Magwins didn't turn up much that's a lot of ones for a dragon. Oh, if only that dragon were elite. He does three damage. Oh. And rolls a four. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Okay, so that dragon is going to get swarmed and bane enchanted in the flank. Still might not kill a dragon, but it's a lot of damage to a dragon. Mm. Yikes. Yikes indeed, sir. Yikes indeed. Yeah, that's what you um, got. Uh huh. And over to Shannon's turn. Shannon doing his uh, wild charge checks here. Oh, does the two get him there? It does. Uh, these luggets have a charge on Samacrest, potentially, if he gets stuff out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. Six, nine, 12. Do I mean, want even it? without it. Well, uh, it, it would it would put them in the way of the paladins. I don't know that there's enough space for the paladins to get through, and you're holding the you'd be holding your opponent's tokens up on their side of the table with nowhere for them to go. Right. I think I think they absolutely want that. What else are they going to do? Spin around and look at the dragon, maybe. I mean, you can put Magwin Joe's either into the paladins or into Samacris as well. 
Mm, uh, he might run into issues fitting. He might. He might. On, in either case, actually. Yeah, so Samakus okay. did, did three wounds to Mogwins last turn. Here goes the Thunder Gun unit into the dragon. It's got Pathfinder, so it won't care that it just right. ran out of the woods. Um, as expected, because Keith parked it right in front of it. Yeah. And like they're they're not gonna do a ton of damage to that dragon, but they'll definitely ground it. Um I guess the dragon could like back off and turn and go punch a mop up launcher next turn, but I don't, know if I don't think it any- could. It doesn't have it. I don't think it could. It's not nimble anymore if it loses. Right, its- once it once it loses flying, yeah. It's not gonna yeah. be able to get around that horde. And then you can turn the magwans around and stand behind it to make a, a wonderful little dragon sandwich. Right. Which he's which he's done. Or which it looks like he's working on doing. So, so that means at, it looks like he's trying to figure out how to back up, pivot them, and have room for those luggets, because he's making room for the luggets to just punch Samacris. Yep. Seems to be the plan right now. I mm-hmm. like it. Solid plan. Mm-hmm. Right. And back it up I, and turn it so it's looking at the back of the dragon. I mean I wish there was yep. a way he could have positioned Samacris to allow a paladin foot guard charge if if he got charged by the luggets but i think it's still there just because samacris isn't what samacris doing in that case is she counter charging and sliding over that might give him room yeah might 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 or might not and uh, unless well let's see what he's doing with magnus i think he's going to i think he's checking to see if he can still get the luggets in and i think the answer is no <laughs> That's a lot for a 40 mil. <laughs> it is. 40 mil Sam- individual. Samacris has a has a dainty a dainty silhouette. She's I mean Julius too. Yeah. Right, Samacris an individual. Oh, Samacris doesn't count as an individual. So no, no, she's Ma- not Magwa's uh Magwa's dual. But Magwa is. is. Magwa is an individual. Right. So Magwa oh, showing Magwa his, has his, his flank. Right, so I was like, I thought oh, you were talking about great. Magua flanking, and I was like, no, but yeah, no, no. duelist, no, because Sam and Chris is large infantry. Yep, but but Magua getting Rohi, flanked by totally. paladins won't matter that much because Magua is an individual, so it's not like they're going to get more attacks. Well, I mean, at this point, he doesn't really. He's just slowing that train down, right? Because if right. you murder this. Yep. There's there's the line. He's got it. Uh, can he fit in his final position between be Magua and the board edge? I think we're no. about to find out. Although I don't sure think he checking. can. But we'll see. But for me here, the thing is, if he can stop up that train of Paladin foot guard and tear down this dragon... Which is quite possible. The rabble ground him. Mm-hmm. And he's got a nimble <laughs> no. crushing strength unit following him up. Yeah, you don't fit, bro. The luggets don't yeah. fit. Too bad. Uh, at Too which bad. point, you might just do the luggets. Yeah. yeah, just just do the luggets. Well, for right? me, it's because Magua is a really flexible unit. I mean, and he can he can do a lot of other stuff while the luggets basically just go punch things. So. Right. I would let the luggets go punch things and keep Magua as this flexible thing in that space that can slow down, disrupt, add extra attacks to the dragon. For all we know, um, he could. I I thought about the dragon. I don't think that's the right call. I don't think so because, yet. Because I think if you oh keep next him, turn when he goes in with the mob beasts too. Okay, that's better. Or just he's your safety net. Like Keith does yeah. something really tricky to get out of a charge arc. He's an individual, mm-hmm. and he's there to just ground him wherever it goes. Right. But I he's, definitely he's don't like it right up. now because then the dragon just spins around and kills Magua. Yeah, yeah. You don't give him a soft target. Yeah. You make him. You make him fight Rabble, where his mm-hmm. uh, crushing strength is like the perfect thing to fight a dragon is Rabble. Oh, where they're strength. hitting on four is because of Phalanx. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's the target you want to give it. It hits on fours. It um, has, you know, a lot of bodies. So the fact that you have these amazing crushing whatever attacks doesn't oh. matter as much. Okay. All right. So he sent the luggage with Elite in on Samacris alone. Yep. So Magua has a charge on those pallet. Yep. Yep. Does. 
Mm-hmm. And Magwa's defense don't. five. This these are the two paladin regiments that don't have crushing strength. That, so they're that just do not have crushing, that's correct. Oh, does he have room? It's tight, yeah. but I think he's got he's got it. Okay, mm -hmm. not that, by much. That, that looks like it fits. This is where you find how like this is UB. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right. Like in a real game, that tower's been bumped three times. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like you have no idea yes. if it actually fit in that micrometer. And then in UB, we're all looking at pixels like, oh, master strategy, he just fits. It's like we we wouldn't have known. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wonder if like after playing on UB tournaments, we will see TOs of in person events do their terrain maps differently with, with like reference measurements from the size. Cause you know, I, I would usually put like a, a grid over mine so you could see, you know, nobody's got rough things. I think I we got a, for me, the, the exacting nature of UB is great for UB, but I, I have no interest in bringing that same level of exactitude to the table. Sure. <laughs> it makes it a game I no longer want to play. Like one of the great things about Kings of War is pre-measuring a green with your opponent and playing quick. Like mm -hmm. we can get games done in two hours, tournament games done in two hours and not feel like you've just been through a meat grinder like the old days. Sure. So <laughs> I, I think that's a strength of the system. And, you know, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to getting back to the tabletop. As great as UB is. For uh, sure. It's the way it should be played. So, and now it's Operation Trap the Dragons. Yeah, I mean, trap, trap ground and grind the dragons. Yeah. I don't think that's what the rabble are doing. I think the rabble are getting ready for Julius. Sure. Sure. Because um, right now Julius, well, we'll see what he goes after. Um, Look, Apparently. and from a, from a narrative perspective, from me imagining this battle happening, I do love the idea that these dragons have flown in <laughs> as these great uh, gleaming beacons of Basilian purity and strength. And there's and just, just a rabble crawling all over <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, just these... Like these shaking their wings trying to get the rabble off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These these noble beasts are just getting swarmed over by rusty hatcheted little weirdos. <laughs> so I, I appreciate that. Um and mm -hmm. and hope they don't make it out. Sorry. Who's uh who's Caldemic? I feel like I know, but I can't think of who it is at the moment. Um who? But but yeah, Shannon. Shannon is definitely going to burn. Oh, is, I see. Is that Paige? No. I can't remember. I don't know. Um, I feel like Paige is usually newbie dice. Who Who um, are you, K-O-W Dimmick? Um, but yeah, Shannon, Shannon will need to pay close attention to his clock, especially if he, kind of paradoxically, if he successfully manages to keep a lot of his units alive, <laughs> um, he'll need to be more aware of his clock because he'll have more to move towards the end. Yeah, he'll be fine. <laughs> fortunately, I, I fortunately mean, push is one of those scenarios where there's really only two things to pay attention to. Like, did I get my guys across the line? Did uh, I pick up the oh. middle token and get them across the line? Yes. <laughs> I forgot about Grup. <laughs> sure. So if the dragon lives, All it's right. going to be weakened too. It doesn't matter against Raw Beasts. It's just... No. It's just funny. Yeah, just hang it's up. also... It, it Four more attacks that blast. Uh, explode, right? Yeah, D3 yeah. blast. Yeah, so That's I've never three. seen Grup on a table before, so this is great because he's new, like, he's pretty yeah. rad. Like, melee three, four attacks would blast D3, so you should be hitting with two to three of those, and that should become four to six actual hits. You say should. Down. None of that is at all consistent. That's fine. He's a goblin. Embrace right. it. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm just saying you can say he should do this much damage, but... But more importantly... He's going to be all the, over the place. The great thing about him 
is that he runs in and he punches someone. And then he has ensnare and basically weakness against that thing. So he's like a really, really like, he's what's great about goblins. He's a budget actor. He's the worst <laughs> actor, but he is a budget actor. He's, he's the, the wish.com actor. Right. He comes in, he's shipped direct from some weird province in China. Unbranded box. <laughs> Clearly, clearly having have, having been hastily three D printed and painted. It's great. We lost Kyle on that. Actually, Kyle, we have a, Kyle will not take our wish dot com bashing <laughs> laying down. He will not stand for it. Not stand for it. We had uh, we had something like that. Have, what is it? Robin ordered a. Uh, it was like a uh, a Grogu, right? Like a baby Yoda. And the little floating carriage thing from the from the Mandalorian uh, that was sure. for sale on on Amazon, and it, it and it was labeled as if it was supposed to be the official merchandise. And when it showed up, it had clearly been three D printed, um, and and painted, and put in an unmarked box, and sent to us. And I was like, "Oh Lord, how much did we pay?" For this? <laughs> I and of course the Amazon store was gone by that point for sure. Yeah, I no way to return it. My wife read a really long New York Times article about how much counterfeit and just fake stuff there is on Amazon. How it's just like even the stuff that's supposed to be real because of their warehousing, like isn't mm -hmm. half the time. Um, hmm. and, and it was a whole it. She, she just came out and was like, we are no longer buying anything for our baby on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> like for us, we'll take the risk, but. No longer does the baby get things from Amazon because who knows where they came from. But All right. okay, so the dragon got uh got charged. Shocked. Dragon got swarmed. Um, yep. Um, Julius is looking at nothing other than the front of rabble and some mob beasts that are probably going to be turned around to face it next turn because yep. Shannon managed to get all the trombones and everything out of his line of sight. And yep. there's no there's no threat to the front because you have three. Um, Paladin foot guard, very slowly legging it forward, and right, and, and still still out of charge range on everything. Yeah, so yeah. that's why I feel okay. some of this dragon play was one turn early. Was premature. Yeah, I feel like Keith might be getting slowed down by this pond more than he thought he would. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I played I played like flying Alpha Strike Abyssals for most of Second Edition, and the thing that I found was like. No matter how much I wanted to go in on turn two, it, it never worked out well. Like it was always, always, always worth maneuvering for another turn to get even better charges in turn three. Um, and when I went in on turn two, I would just sort of bounce off of stuff. He's shooting uh, so. mop ups at Julius too. He gets he got a ton of hits. He did. Are there are they piercing one? No. No, dude, it's a dog. So he thought. did two damage. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> They're not doing anything else. Can they not see yeah. any luggets? Is that the problem? I don't uh, think you can see luggets with them. No. no. <laughs> All right, let's see what the shotguns do. Two damage. Yeah, at least, at least piercing one. So. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you've we'll... you've moved him out of iron resolve, like you're right. actually sticking damage now. Right. There's okay. bane chant on and the flanking. There's the bane chant. Yep, on the flanking mob beast. He's still got the wizard. Who could bane he's... chant the other one? Which it looks like it's what he's planning on doing. I would do which it. He also he gets so it. Now we've got double bane chanted units on this dragon. Yep. Oh, <clears throat> so you, bad for the a... dragon. It was a bad charge. Lewis Sarah called it 12-14 is tough for only 10 attacks. And getting five hits it was bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, there like, three hits. I think he I only think got average, three. He did, he, did, he did three wounds. He did like, I think, four hits and only three wounds. Maybe I think average, you should have wavered them on a seven. Um, somewhere around that. I don't know. Someone will come mm. in and do the real math. And, <laughs> I'm not. Even a waiver there is not bad, right? I mean, a waiver's not great because of they were all over the side, so units were still going to get in on you. 
Um, uh, a waiver just means that you you get charged and then you finish them so off next turn and you're Grup sitting there forever. Three. Here's, here's Grup doing their thing yet. Yeah. Three. That's big. Sure, but a waiver means he doesn't get flanked. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then Julius is threatening when the when Shannon doesn't kill the dragon. 16 yeah, yeah. hits on 32. Uh, for what, fours? No, they hit on threes, right? Yep. Oh, and he banned Shannon. That's 16 damage from Maw Pups. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so those that, uh, that, that first with reroll. Vicious. Those yeah, are mob beasts. Mob beasts. Beast. Sorry. Whatever. Put some, put some respect on their name. No. <laughs> they just ate a dragon. <laughs> they did just eat a dragon. They just, they just swarmed and ate a dragon. Yeah, he didn't even he didn't even need to or did he even roll the attacks from the front? Oh no, he rolled them all together. He rolled There's them all at once. Yeah. There There's both just really big sure. bones left. Um it's been stripped down like a cartoon piranha swarm. <laughs> Definitely, it's just it's just bones left. Right, it's just a and just just a big pile of dust that eventually clears, and there's nothing but bones. Like I imagine, like the dragon gets eaten, sort of whole, and there's that moment where the paladin, sit, the high paladin, is sitting on the back in thin air. Oh, for sure, we're going like full cartoon. cartoon here. Yeah, <laughs> holds up like, a little sign where, or something. Where did my dragon go? <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> So that's going to be first blood in this match. Is uh, it's a dragon? Mob oh beast eating a dragon. With the, with, well, neither with of these Rex armies, assistance. neither of these armies, basically brought chaff in a traditional sense. Um, so yeah, Keith yeah. brought five regiments of paladins. What are you talking about? Those are not <laughs> chaff. I thought well, all clearly not chaff. because he's using his works? dragons as chaff. Oh, oh, that's big. Okay, okay. Oh. What happened? Uh, the, uh, the thunder gun unit didn't do any damage to the dragon. <laughs> so so that's, that that's dragon has several options. Oh, I'm so happy Maybe. about that for the quality Six, of this nine, game. 12, 15, 18, 19, 20. It's got a couple of options, but it can't really get all the way over here. Oh, it doesn't have the rear of the luggets, which is what mm -hmm. I was thinking. Yeah. And now here. We'll see what it does. That's. So these are the elite. That. Elite Luggets on Samacris? Yep. Do seven? It's pretty good. Seven and rolls an eight and an 11. No. Whoa. Easy game. Yeah, right. Okay, never mind. So, so much for this whole whiffing on the dragon thing if he's deleting Samacris like that. Yeah, I'll take that trade any day of the week. Uh -huh. I'll take I'll take not <laughs> crowning the dragon to pick up Samacris in one shot and turn... Turn, what turn are we in? Two? Oh <laughs> Is this turn two? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Because they're not keeping track, but I think this is turn two. It is. Uh... Alright, just a couple of wounds. That's fine. Uh, that, that I think is going to bring a very eventful second turn to a close. What? <laughs> I mean, that's okay. rough. That is rough. Yeah, yeah. Just roll tens and elevens, and, or nines and elevens. You're good to go. You've lost your dragon and your fancy phoenix, and now the Luggett gang has a clear line on the paladins that have the tokens. It's like a yeah. third of Keith's army right there, right? Between those two units. No, it's only a little over 500. Okay. Yeah, but still, it's, it's both of his tokens. So, yeah, he's... He's, he's going to be dropping those tokens now. Ooh. Okay, Luis did I'm the guessing. math. It wasn't a good yeah. charge. Well, what what I was looking at is not the route, um, but that that's sort of what I said, which is a seven to waiver. It's yeah, it's still not a great waiver. <sighs> when when you could just spend another turn dancing and breathing on things and then find a better charge, yeah, like like so if that's, that's a, okay, it's it's turn five. If 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 I don't do this, the, the game's gonna slip away from me. So screw it, give it a try. But like that shouldn't be your opening charge with a with an alpha strike that's dragon my list. General thought, and I think I think there are generally two types of personalities that say, I see an opening, I want to take it and create chaos in my opponent's army, or I see an opening, but I want to maneuver to improve my position. Like I'm gonna forgo that opening right. and I want to maneuver. And those are generally what I see as two different KOW sort of personality types. The like, sure. uh, I see an opening, just take it. Or 
I don't take my openings and I keep maneuvering. And each can be taken too far. Like a bad player can charge in too early and a bad player can wait too long and not take the, the opportunities that are there because they keep trying to reposition. Um, mm -hmm. And this one just felt like a, felt like a little bit too quick of a trigger pull. Um, yeah, definitely. Especially he because he has breath attacks and they're against goblins where breath attacks are actually relevant. Like yeah. you're not facing earth elementals. Um, <laughs> so I feel like he could have improved his position, um, so, especially on that flank. Um, the Julius one I think is, was cool. Um, the Julius one think, was good. And I think he lucked out that the rabble didn't do one damage with Pathfinder. That's <laughs> what you get for putting Thunder Gun on Rabble. Mm, yeah. I'm curious what Julius follows up with. Like, does he try and finish off the mobbies? Because that's not great. And there is now essentially, um, it's not relevant yet, but like those um, War Trombone's job is now to just follow Julius for the rest of the game until mm -hmm. they're relevant. <laughs> like they have nothing else to do. They're just like, oh, hey, it's a tall target. Let's just keep shooting that. I mean. And two more turns of that, that's a dead Julius. So. It is. And I kind of, I, I don't know. I feel like if I was Keith right now, I would be trying to figure out how I rescue my tokens. Because I don't know that. I'm going to get Shannon's, no. I guess, throwing th throwing the dragon into the flank of the mincer there is a good start. But um, Which tokens are you looking at? Keith's tokens on his paladins over on the so, far left. So interestingly, I don't know if you saw, he did declare that he was dropping them. Right. And so that'll that'll keep them out of the hands of Keith's units for at least a turn or so. But it also means... He doesn't hold them right now. The back paladin unit is definitely going to have to step forward right. and win a and, and win a combat just to just to have them. And if those combats yeah. just grind and are slow and take the rest of the game, Which then he might, might not end up holding them, and he probably won't get across the table with them. <sighs> then we're back yeah, to the game. Who's, who's holding the middle token at the end? Which, looking at the middle right now, I guess there's a dragon there. And Julius, who's positioning, hopefully in a better spot than this. Yeah, I don't know. You you sent your whole air force in, and half of it crashed on the on the second turn. It's now you have to think really carefully about what you do with your two remaining pieces. Uh, you do this. I like it. Just back up. Threaten everything. Uh, so he's so one unit of mobbies can charge him on a three, which now all of a sudden I don't like it now that I see that. But in general, I think positioning Julius rather than I'd maybe have gone for a pivot and back up because I think that can arc dodge both of them. Oh, maybe not. No, I don't think it does. I'm not sure that he can get within 12 of either of the mop up launchers. He might be able to get out of arc. Oh! Use Julius to help bail out the paladins. Yeah. That's that's kind of that's kind of what I was expecting. Okay. Or, or, or at least what I felt like I would probably do in his situation is like, yeah, I've got two dragons. One of them needs to go over there and make sure Shannon doesn't take my tokens away from my paladins at another turn. And now Shannon needs to decide, am I just going to let him do that and shoot at him or throw magwins into him to hopefully ground him? Definitely throw magwins into him to hope to ground him. <sighs> True, because I'm I'm guessing this dragon is going to kill this mincer with the flank charge. 
and then everything, all, all, all your shooting stuff can just shoot the dragon instead. I don't know if it rolled like the last dragon. At least it's in the flank this time. I don't know. What's the what's the nerve on a mincer? Dash 11. <laughs> Dash 11, and it's what, 20 attacks in the flank? 20 threes? attacks on fours and twos. On yeah. fours, because it's because it's hindered. Yeah. It is hindered, but still, it's twenty attacks. Twenty attacks on fours and twos on a dash eleven, even inspired. Like eh, you should be fine. He's pretty good. And snake this time eyes. he isn't snake getting eyes would be flanked if he fails. This time he's not getting flanked if he fails. That's right. And I think he just does this, backs up into the woods. Right. Yeah, that that rabble fluff in their lines is keeps this a game. Mm-hmm. Especially if, with yeah. Samacris down too, ugh, that would be real bad for Keith. If if that hadn't happened, this would be basically be a, a game game over situation. I think. I mean, there's always half back, but that would have just yeah. been. Yeah, and I guess you know Shannon could have Bane chanted the Thunder Gun unit instead of uh, Bane chanting the <laughs> Mobs in of- the front. Committing, I mean, yeah, maybe he overcommitted, uh, but he killed a dragon, and he knew, he, and, and and he wasn't trying to kill the other one with the thunder gun unit. He right, was he was just going it, for which one. Which he really should have the really yeah, have. even fives and fives. The odds of failing. How many attacks do they have? Thirty. Twenty. Twenty-five. Twenty-five or thirty. Twenty-five. Oh, they don't have. They didn't have spears. They have thunder gun. That's right. Yeah, it's twenty-five. Um, you're generally looking at. Eight or nine hits, trying to get one five out of that. Yeah, which should, yeah should happen. Should happen. It should. Um, I'm running it real quick. Okay, it's like ninety five percent of the time that works without a big right. chant. Right, that you do at least one. So, so it's probably and, the smart and, thing to do because that felt really safe. But mm-hmm. dice, and along with my narrative, you have all these rabble crawling all over this dragon, and it and it just flies its away. Off. <laughs> Takes its yeah. wings off and flies away because they couldn't do yeah. jack. Because mm-hmm. you need the mobbies. You need the mobbies. Oh, did Julius have arc to that man, sir? I don't think so. He didn't have arc to. He charged it. I didn't think he had arc to the trumpet. Which way was he facing? Bottom corner. Uh, okay. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I think in all the so this is something that does happen on real tables too. In all the backing up and putting Julius back and moving him and moving him back, they might have lost track of where Julius had started. Yeah, because I felt like Shannon had had moved all of those up, such that Julius didn't have a charge on I, anything. I didn't think middle. he had char- He had an he had arc on the luggets. And definitely no, think, not the I, I didn't think he had arc on the war trombones. No, he, no, he didn't right. have arc on the, the war trombones. War trombones had, had been just out. Yeah, no. He had arc on the mob beast he, packs and on the rabble horde, and that's it. He definitely didn't have arc on this mincer. It's a great charge. Is he an individual or something crazy? It's, like it's that? a great illegal charge. It's a great illegal yeah. charge. <laughs> yeah, so this is not, not his, where Julius that's started. Not, that's not his position. Yeah, that's, that's not his not starting position. That's not where Julius started. Yeah, keep hitting undo. Keep hitting undo. Keep hitting undo. That's where there Julius. This is where Julius started. Is. Okay. There it is. <laughs> they got there. They got there. I'm very glad they got there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We might have had more of a game if that charge were legal. <laughs> It's like if if you get enough bad luck at the beginning of the game, your arc becomes ninety instead of. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just let you have that. Head Everything on a, on a square base gets the individual rule for a couple yeah. turns. Head on a swivel. <laughs> just make does that. Julius shot. have a breath attack. Yes, a uh, fireball eight. So breath yes. attack doesn't exist in. Right. Uh, Whatever he has, fireball. He's no. he's got fireball eight, right? Well, no, the dragon has. Dragon's breath as an attack. Yeah, but it's not. Sure. There is no longer a rule called. Breath right, attack. right, right. But Julius he, does breathe fire. Yes, he does. He's a dragon. He, no, Julius throws fire. He's he breathes it. In my mind, he's breathing it. Sure. 
Um, so anyway, where I'm going with that is I think instead of charging, <laughs> he finds a good spot and breathes on something. Sure. You know Julius is a dude, not a dragon, right? Is, uh, is, what's is the second of, of word a his title, name, in his official title? Yeah, it does say Dragon of Heaven, but that could be like an opposite, yeah, yeah. You know? like, He's a dragon. Chris's mother of phoenixes, and she's not. Yeah, she's a phoenix. phoenix. No. Yeah, and Julius is a dragon. <laughs> okay. He flies around, hits things really hard, and th uses ranged fire. He's a dragon. It's okay. I, we'll move on. I have some really bad news for you about buffalo wings. <laughs> I feel like I send him over there to, to bail out my, my paladins that are stuck behind that building. Um, I feel like it's way too early in in push to just throw your hands up and say, well, maybe they'll grind it out. Yeah, but if he's here, he's still threatening those charges. He's hindering Magwans if they charge. Oh, he undid it. Okay, never mind. I liked the spot he had just undone. Okay. I mean, it's a tough, it's a tough call because you can't uh, just leave him hanging out there doing nothing. He'll just get shot at. No, but if he moves here, spins around to look, and is out of everyone's arc, and then fireballs somebody. Okay, I'm gonna take terrible. one moment, one moment for this. Can you see my screen? Yes. No. I mean, That's I can. Serious. I. I would have to that's, swap out their 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 UB thing to show it. Hold on, it's, that's okay. Oh, you're you're showing the model? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is Julius. He's dragon still a dragon. dragon. <laughs> okay, never mind. We're done. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> you had me thinking I was crazy. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, He's in a low he guy. who is super dragony. Yeah, but. He's... That's why he gets the small base. Yeah, because he's actually in Elohi, but and it and it makes him even crazier that like he's just a person with eight attacks, <laughs> crushing strength three, dread. <laughs> like... Okay, so he fireballs these guys for two. Oh, it's a waiver. Okay. Is it still a waiver with dread? I think it's still a waiver with dread. Well, that that helped. Yeah, that makes the dragon a lot safer. Now the dragon's just a fancy war trombone. I like it. <laughs> it's just Julius trombone of heaven. But I do, I mean, I do really think as long as he's sort of dicking around in the back there, there's a clock on him. Like each turn, he takes three to four more damage. That just happens. So. Yeah. Because um, one turn of trombones he doesn't care about, but a game of turns, trombones. Yes. The, the worst, like even worse than season eight, <laughs> a game of trombones. <laughs> oh boy. So we did eight. Yeah, okay, so he killed the Mensa. Dragon doing what dragons need to do. Mm -hmm. hitting, hitting goblin units on the flank and picking them up. And it doesn't take much for the, gobl for, for the goblin, for the dragon to be safe from mob beasts. I guess Luggets still might have, I don't know. I still want to just see the dragon back up, but I guess rotating outside of the mob beasts 15 is reasonable too. He's shutting down some of his options though. Yeah. But those luggets have a charge, right? Yeah, the luggets have a charge. But that's a but, bad charge. Yeah. <laughs> that's where I was going with it. that. 
it's hindered, and then you're opening yourself up to the slow, but getting there eventually, Paladin Foot Guard. Yeah, that gets the and... Paladin Foot Guard there. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not eventually at that point, it's right now. If I... he takes that terrible charge. I mean, I think Keith's in a different, decent spot in the middle right now to get that central token. If because Shannon has a dragon sitting next to him, but he also has to be aggressive and protect that central token. Um, because if he lets the paladin foot guard get far enough forward, then the back unit just picks it up and starts moonwalking away. <laughs> do it, do it. Just, just gonna, just gonna step back, guys, and just hold this token technically. Although, if he manages to pick up the two over there, then it's he doesn't even need to worry about the no. the middle token. Yeah. Shannon can also start bringing these rabble and the mob and the Magwan's unit back towards the middle. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just because Julius chose not to help bail him out. Nah. Julius is doing his own thing now. <sighs> yeah. Not a dragon. I'm a free man. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speaking of I getting like places it. eventually. Yeah. They're nimble. We'll skirt right around that thing. And turn is oh, it three right now? Three, three four. He skirts around a little bit more. Five. He starts threatening into the center. Yeah, I like it. I like this less. What is he doing? I think it's just opening up his charge range because he can always nimble and re re sort of. If he still wants to go around the forest, he can. But. Yeah. But that also means he's got the option next turn of swinging around the building to look at the paladins on the left or continuing to thread the middle. Mm. Or he's just freaked out that there's a dragon and he's trying to cover every inch of board space. <laughs> that's that's it too. Like if that I guess I don't know what he's doing with the with his middle. The, everything's pointed a different direction. He's reacting. <laughs> it's entirely yeah. reactionary. Yeah, and that, that wayward mob beast there really, That's rough. Him up, really gets in his way. That's rough. Because at this point, like your your plan is to shoot Julius to death this turn. Because you can't waver him because he's fearless. And you, you don't really shoot have him to death this turn. Well, that's true. He can't shoot him to death this turn, and therein lies the problem. Because he's got nothing that can charge him. The only thing he can do is shoot at him. Uh, but he doesn't have enough gun to put him down this turn, so that means whatever he does how, has to prepare how far to be hit. Is, uh, how far is Nail's grub long nail? Uh, just inside of 11. So he can get there. Yeah. No, I can't. Oh, he's, he's speed six? six? Yeah. yeah, he is. Why is he I speed six? You. He's a goblin. Because he's an assassin. He is a goblin ninja. Oh, that's what you do. You just grup him, yeah. hope to do one. Yeah. Because you're only crushing strength one. Yep. That's what you got to do. At which point, Julius can still maybe rear charge some still, goblins. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah I yeah, mean, you, I would you, just you keep still shooting have to... him. I would just keep shooting him. Like... I kind of like the charge. But then you yeah, still have to worry about the other dragon. Yeah. And the mob pups can shoot at the dragon, but the dragon's in cover. Uh, do the mob pups not ignore cover? They ignore cover. Question. Oh, they do ignore um, cover. Okay. But up, oh, yep, they eh? did. Okay. Yeah, it's still, it's, still it's not better great. than when he shot at Julius with the mop ups. Plus, Shannon has hit five out of twelve shots with mop ups. Like, let's just acknowledge that. 
or 10 out of 12, sorry, not five. So he'll do that again. Right. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, but I mean, definitely figured out what to do in the middle on this turn is pretty critical. Um, Chen has done a good job of setting up not great charges and reacting to where Keith moves all his flying threats. And he did really well last turn, picking up two of them. Um, yeah. But he's not swarming a dragon this turn. Is Grup going in? Oh, Grup should go in. It should be four to six hits. Should. And this is the giant, like, should. Should uh -huh. be basically four to six hits trying to get a five. Uh, uh could, could, a could four throw a because a four. flag it has nothing better to do. Yeah, yeah. so you bane chant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've got two two characters that can cast bane chant and really don't have anything else to cast bane chant on, so you can easily try one and if he misses it, roll it with the other anyway. Right, oh, right. I love, it. I love a bane chanted goblin ninja going to like <laughs> fucking solo this dragon this dragon man. <laughs> no, I'm calling him a dragon. <laughs> this this embodiment of the heavens. This sure. like, pure spirit of Basilian like godhood. And then there's like this dirty goblin ninja <laughs> just runs up and shivs him <laughs> with his prison shake. <laughs> oh, it's great. No, because um what's his name's a wizard too? Grub. Grub. Is Grapple Wizard? He's spellcaster level one. Okay. That's he doesn't know any spells, skills. but Nin Ninja I I, I think his fluff is that he's a melee wizard. That's a goblin. I, I don't. I know. think before the game, uh, Shannon indicated that Grapple is actually a she. Oh, I missed that. So she's a goblin wizard. She's a goblin wizard. Wizard ninja, multi class. Rogue wizard. Goblin wizard ninja, of course. Got, got one level of rogue, eight level, or one level of uh, wizard, eight levels of rogue. So she's got that spellcaster level one. Just for a melee buff on herself to rogue. Anyway. Right. I don't know what these luggets do to inked by a dragon. Yeah, I mean, he's, he is in a tight spot here in the middle. Like, pretty much mm -hmm. however he moves, he's gonna he's, he's likely to leave an opening somewhere. So, like, considering which units you... Which units I, you want to die and where you want them to die. Kind of like double-teaming paladins with luggets. That's not what he's doing if he's moving the mincer here, but... Yeah. That might be what I would do. Yeah, instead he's going to try to defend against the double charge, probably, with his token carriers. It's going to be one of those games where they end up switching tokens mid-game. Um, the Mincer's actually keeping anyone from taking on those Luggets. And then the other luggets are just going in. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I was thinking like a, a double luggage charge there. Would yeah, but I would. But then it, it 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 probably leaves your your token carriers with no op with with no way to not get either flanked or reared by something next turn. Yeah, I guess you're right on that. No, it works. I think it works if you sidestep them and pivot the other. Oh, I guess it depends on what you roll then. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless he's about to say the hell with it and double charge anyway. It's what I would say, but Shannon's generally a more cautious player than I am. Yeah. I'm pretty good at this game. Yeah, that, that I watched him. Uh, I watched him beat Jeff O'Neill at Siege of Augusta with a a Mongol list. 
Oh, with his Mongols? I've played those Mongols yeah. before. Yeah. And so for, for those of you that, that aren't familiar, that's like the goblin list that no one likes playing against. It's like the all-shooting castled up, you know. Not a real army. Not, definitely not a real army. Right. Wasn't a real army then, definitely not a real army. <laughs> right, well, now it's definitely yeah. not. Also, traditionally, Mongols, any of the steppe tribes have always been almost impossible to model on the tabletop in a, in a fun way. In a fun way? Yeah. There's, yeah. I mean, fun for both sides. Right. <laughs> like, I've, I have not yet seen a game make it sort of realistic to how they fought and at all enjoyable for anyone to play that game. <laughs> so. You don't think it's a good play experience to just sit there and hope they run out of arrows? No. Okay. No, no. <laughs> while, they, and like, while they ride circles around you? You could probably do it with a hard turn limit so they can't ride circles around you and because th then they just lose on scenario. That's not yeah, it's realistic. Not. They would just leave and come back a day later. Like that's the whole thing. <laughs> we're we're just gonna make more arrows, peace. Yeah, well, um, so the other side <laughs> is that Mongols were broken in real life, so, yes. but not not because of necessarily the battlefield, but because of what happened strategically, like well, the sure. fact that they would, you know. Anyways, we're not gonna go into Mongols. Not. I think army. we just did. Let's talk about Grub. <laughs> Confirmed, it is a she. Oh, um, let me pull up my. She's in Halpy's Rift, right? Yeah, and uh, she is a wizard, I think, of some yeah. kind. But but stole these like dwarven, elvish like gauntlets that are now attached to her hands <laughs> and like launch lightning bolts at people. Wait, wait, so, awesome. gore. so this is like that Elijah Wood movie where he wakes up and someone has bolted machine guns to his hands and he can't drop them. Sure. I Definitely yeah. did not see. Oh, she's got like two pages of text in this book. I'm not reading that right now. No, I just did. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> That's the deal. You should you should check that movie out if you hadn't heard of it. I can't remember the name of it right now, but I'm sure if you just search like Harry Potter with guns bolted to his hands, you know, you'll you'll find it. Wait, who was it? Streaming service. Uh, oh no, I'm, I'm sorry. Not uh, not not Elijah Wood. Daniel Radcliffe, I think. Okay. Yeah. So what does Keith do now to win? Um, Just keep eating things with dragons. So it looks like he did send the luggets with the tokens into the dragon and position an individual to keep them from being hindered. Yep, and dropped drop the tokens. Drop the dropped tokens. The tokens. Um, by keeping from being hindered, he did make them flanked. Yes. Did Similarly, he, he's going to... Are they right I on that so. line or are they on that line? I, I think, that's I think they're, flanked. They're, they're flanks. That's a I flank. think they're flanked. Um, he also is getting his other luggets flanked, assuming they don't kill these paladin foot guard, which that feels we'll bad, right? That that Wait, does seem bad. Am I crazy? No, you're not crazy. And Julius has options, but like, if Julius wants to join in the flank on these these luggets with blade of slashing with the dragon that's already going to flank them, then like I you call think that, Grub that a win. still just punches Julius. Oh, they kept the tokens. Oh, even though they're getting flanked. Sure, because I mean, at that point it's like the dragon will have to pick them up, and then the dragon's kind of a kind of a stationary target at that point. And then the yeah, dragon the is a very care. Durable brick in terrain on Shannon's half of the table. Yeah. Yeah, but he's got rabble with completely the surrounded. Pathfinder yeah, okay. about to come hit them, and there's a guy with Bane Chan nearby. Like, uh, he's got mobbies in there too. I hear you, but no, you're right. He. It's a bad play. Waiting. This is all just a chance to give the Thunder Gun unit redemption. <laughs> you got away from us once. Well, I think you you do get a bonus point if your Thunder Gun unit is in a combat where an enemy unit gets routed. So putting them back into combat yes. to make sure something dies is good for the tournament placement overall. You also want your Thunder Gun unit to be entirely on your opponent's side of the table. So sending them forward is also a good thing. 
Uh, his Thunder Gun unit is in a good position to do neither of those things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, unless these Luggets get the kill. Sure. If the Luggets then get the kill, can double then team them with can double up. Yeah, all these the Paladins, the and that should kill Luggets. Yeah. And oh, interesting. So he's he's put Grub in a place that keeps Julius from being able to flank these luggets, I think. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Julius will have to charge Grub instead. Maybe Julius is really small. Oh, he's moving even closer. Okay. Yeah, and they're, uh -oh. they're, they're he's just he's just there they are checking. Check. Yeah. 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 Okay. No fit for you. Mm -hmm. Are we seriously turn three? Mm -hmm. Dude, this has been a very be eventful a first couple of turns. Okay, there, so I said that 70 minutes was Shannon. a long time to play, and it is. They're just, we're going to use all 70 minutes. Just Shannon. Ah, but, but you know, uh, push yeah. is one of those scenarios that you can dice down and still easily win, right? Like if, you're, if your units are holding all the tokens. Yeah. Uh, and they're in Shannon places where your opponent can't get to them easily, like you might not kill them and get them. We got to find out who KOW Dimmick is because he was <laughs> calling chalk, clock trouble an hour ago. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be Bane Chant, I'm guessing. On the Luggets in the Dragon. Yeah, you definitely Bane Chant them. And now we're going to shoot some mob pups at some Luggets that are in combat. Yep. And it gets it. Ooh. Oh, unless that first shot was mob pups. Oh, I think it was. It was. He rolled the, three dice. He's using he yellow. He's using pups. yellow. And now there's Bane Chance. And okay, now so he's Bane using yellow. Them, he's using yellow axes for mob pups. Assume he's, yep, now he's Bane Chanting the other Luggets and gets it. Okay, so gets. all of that went off. All the buffs. Yeah. All the buffs. He's, he's stacked the deck in his favor. Still goblins. He's still and playing now, goblins. Still playing goblins, and here come the trombones on duels, I'm guessing. Might as well. They have Three to. More? If he Eight didn't more? throw Grub at him. Eight. Whoa. So that put him at eleven? Uh, oh. Eleven and seven 17? is eighteen. That does it. Yeah. So this is down. Okay. All right. And now where the mob were we saying seven. he wasn't shooting Julius to death this turn? Uh, Twenty minutes ago, but it was this turn, right? It was still this turn. <laughs> <laughs> it was, and I mean, here's the thing: like Shannon shouldn't clock out. Like he's removing all of the threats. <laughs> right. Like from, from here on, like, like this is a, this is an easy game. Like right, once, once all the dragons are gone, a spot this turn where it doesn't matter. Right, you don't have to uh, think for 15 a... minutes on every combat anymore. Ooh. Uh, so that's going to be the Luggets on the Pallies. Uh, that killed them. Get some. Get some. Yeah. With an 11 and a 7. Thunder Gun unit getting the game. Uh, no, because all the... I guess the dragon is what they're going to kill. Or contribute Probably. to the combat that kills. That should be, should be their move. Yep, and you turn to put all the pallies in the front and the dragon's in your rear, but if the dragon decides to go hit the rear instead, great. Doesn't kill the unit with tokens. All right, so here go the maw pups. That's going to be four hits on the maw pups. And do maw pups have piercing or crushing? Uh, no. Then it's nothing. Unless they, unless they, have, unless they have crushing one. He just drug a two over. I'm guessing that's the two fours. 
Uh, so 10 hits, looking for what, Those threes? Those are luggets, right? Yeah. yeah. Crush one. Do the mop get however much crushing? So that's what, eight, eight wounds total on a dragon, and a five rolled will not get the dragon. So no, but all. you're not expecting to kill the dragon with a regiment of goblins. I don't know how this one's been going. If there go the mob pups over here, only two hits. And those are defense five, so one wound from the mob pups on the luggets. And now the luggets with elites. Oh, that's a lot a bunch of ones. Of, getting a bunch of ones, so. Oh, never not mind. Not converting. <laughs> only converting one. So that's only going to be seven hits and uh, three wounds. So now uh, we'll see what Magua does. Oh, no, that's why you didn't be enchant them. Jeez, not a good roll from Magua. Only one hit and one wound, I think. She's crushing two, okay. right? I think. I think so. It's not. Nope, just crushing one, so nothing. So that's. Uh, he just took all the wounds off. So six, I think. Yeah, six wounds, seven wounds. Okay. On the pallies. And they're uh -huh. 15, 17. Yeah. 15, 17. So Elite it's gonna infantry, be... they should be fine. Yeah. Uh, they are uninspired. Are uninspired. Uh, but Mago doesn't have Dread or anything like that. And Luggets don't have Brutal, do they? Okay, well, there we go. They're fine. Not like that. They're five. Yeah, they're okay. So they'll I, they'll I resolve one back down to six. There's no way for their backup to get into this combat, though. So that'll be just the same all over again next turn. Uh, and I think that brings us to the end of turn three. Whew. We're on turn four now. <laughs> um, and turn four should be pretty quick, just because there's only one dragon left to make a decision. Q, Q should take four and a half minutes for this round. Right. Oh, he is taking he, that rear. He is taking the rear instead of going after the tokens. It does pretty much guarantee your thunder gun point. So, sure, because now you can put the front paladins into the mincer mm -hmm. and the back Pick paladins. Pick up the token even, because those, yep. they're in a pretty safe spot right for now. Yep. Um, and, and, it, then, and it also puts your dragon somewhere where probably nothing can get to it. Three, six, nine, ten. Yeah. Right. So really nothing's going to be able to hit your dragon next turn. He's now just trying to create a battle line again. Right. With, with these, <laughs> right. Like... like I do like this dragon sort of circuitous route of like, I'm going in guys. I'm getting out. I'm getting out. <laughs> help me. Help me. Right. Mm -hmm. Back me up. Yes. Yes. Nope. 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 And he's getting him. I mean, it's not a lot, but he is getting him to the heel. He's getting him to the heel. That and he got him out heel. of the threat range of everything except shooting. Perhaps that sick heel three. It's sick heel three. Uh, Super sick. Nope, oh, but now oh. he's thinking about it. Okay, counter charging is definitely not the right option. I think the rear charge yeah. was way better. Yeah, I think the rear charge is way better. And obviously, he had the flank. Right, because because picking up the tokens is kind of a trap. Because uh, then you're you're still right there in the middle. Multiple things can hit you next mm -hmm. turn. Then like Rabble will be holding the tokens in the middle of the table. Mm -hmm. And looks like he's using the priest to push the paladins over. I'm not totally sure why. Yeah. Is he trying to not actually... be hindered? And if so, he needs to move the priest up into the pond to keep them out. Don't he's know. trying to both not hinder them and uh, stay in range, probably to heal or do something useful. Sure. But like the dragon's going to do enough wounds on its own. The paladins yeah, just have to I... walk up and be part of the combat for the point. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what that priest is doing. That priest should... If it's not Bane chanting the guys that are fighting the Mincer, it should just... Does it have heal? Sure. It has heal three. It has heal. Yeah, it's got heal. It's got heal. Sick um, heal. It, it's got sick, super sick heal three. It could be about trying to make sure that they, they're they positioned right, right where he wants on the reform so that he does end up with something like a battle line. And he's done. He won't Instead have of, a battle line. Yeah. Two units counts as a line. <laughs> I don't think he has two units in a line. They will I be. think he just has three units in various places. I 
Has Shannon, has Shannon really just lost a mincer? I think so. That's it, right? He's about to lose Luggets. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this is scrappy at this point for Keith. Oh. There's a very, very, like, how does he win? Because those Paladin foot guard fighting Magva and the Luggets are in a losing losing war of attrition because you have two units against one the entire time. Yes. It's only turn four. Like, if it were later in the game, then he just grinds it out and ends up with three tokens. But it's only turn four. If Shannon has time, he has at least three more turns to kill all this stuff. <laughs> In 16 minutes. Did he just waver Magua? Magua? He's goblin. What's Magua's nerve? A nine. And Magwin's nerve, Magwin Joe's nerve is twelve fourteen. So that's thirteen. He was... So okay. that's a waiver. But that the makes it less bad, hit. but the luggage can probably do it on their own at this point. Yep. I mean that's the thing you're stuck with is your your the the luggets are untouched. Mm -hmm. Um so this is probably the dragon in the rear. This is definitely they, the dragon. And yeah, they have a hindered. good chance. The Luggets have a good chance at dropping the Paladin foot guard next turn. Yeah. Right, on their own. Mm -hmm. And then you are still faced with Magua and Luggets. Uh, but up. do the... And then the Luggets overrun to take, yeah, and hopefully maybe take it on a, like, three... All right, and then Paladin with two handed weapons in the elite aura against yep. a mincer. What did he heal the dragon? Was that his spell from the priest? I think so. It's at five I didn't, now. So okay, yeah, I didn't see him doing yeah. it. it. It went so down. I wasn't sure. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna scroll back to it. <laughs> yeah, but pre presumably <laughs> makes sense. If he didn't, they enchant the paladins. It's the only thing to do. All right. So these guys crush one with the two-handed weapons. Elite. Threes and fives with elite. Yeah. Uh, because I mean, what, they, Mincers have big shield? Yeah, yeah, Mincers have big shield. They just yeah. start. They just start hitting it. They do yep. a couple damage. It's fine. Yep. Dash, dash 11 inspired. Could get it on a, on a couple of good nerve rolls. But it looks like I mean, he's still fiddling with the dragon. That's the trouble yeah. with dash eleven, is your um, like it's solid, but it's low. So you're you're really just hoping that you do a couple damage and get a great nerve roll. Like the variability is in your nerve roll, not in the amount yeah. of damage you're doing. Yeah, sure, absolutely. But more damage is still better. Like. Uh, 10 hits on 12 dice, ain't bad. And there's the uh, elite roll, which does not hit. Doesn't work, but still 10 hits. But how many fives can you get? Oh, three. Three? Three's so pretty good. Burn eight. And burn eight twice, right? Yeah. Inspired? Yeah. So yeah. Flag it over there. Okay. No. So. Uh, the seven twice. What? Oh. Oh, he did four wounds. He did four. Why did he do, why did he do he four He didn't wounds? do four. Does Big Shield automatically make you defense six, or is it just plus one defense? It's six. It's plus two defense, I thought. It's defense six. Um, uh, that's weird. One. I didn't see a Bane Chant cast. He didn't cast Bane Chant, did he? This priest no, does have he definitely Bane Chant. healed. Had hmm. he done one to that thing previously at any point? No, I don't think so. Okay, so it just shouldn't be dead right now. 
unless he didn't heal and Bane chanted and it went and the dragon only went from six to five because of an iron resolve roll that we missed. Uh, no, because I did scroll up and he rolled three dice and got two successes. So that must have been the heal. Okay. So I don't know what that's all about. Okay. No, that's the plus one crushing unit. Yeah. So they were yeah, on fives. But he rolled so he got three, three successes. Three fives. Right. Okay. And then three fives rolled and two holes. sevens. Yeah, then I got I got nothing. Yeah. They aren't magically brutal or anything, no? No, I don't think that unit's brutal from anything. No. The the aura that they're in is only for elites. Mm -mm. And Julius is dead, so there's no dread. And we're sure that Big Shield... I mean, Mincers have Brutal, but it doesn't work against you. Yeah, Big Shield makes you defense six. Yeah, it's defense six. Okay, well, it should have been... Should have been three wounds, and a seven would have been a ten, and they're dash eleven, so... Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mistakes happen. It's not yeah. that the... Right, Julius has dread, but he's dead. Julius has dread, so. But the regular dragons don't, so it's not that. Um, that well, like if, the, if the dragon had dread, that would do it. They're moving on, so it looks like they're just they going with it. Yep. Uh, yep. So this is going to be bottom so turn honest, four. Honest mistakes happen. Yep. Um. But because we all know Keith, Keith is a super stand-up guy. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah, Mistakes yeah. happen, uh, which means we we have to forever let this hang around his head. Oh, a, okay, that's where we're going with this. Sure, yeah, absolutely. oh yeah. Filthy cheating at the top tables of always sunny and Panathor too. Um, dirty, dirty Basilian cover ups and tricks. I don't think I like this Magwan's placement. I feel like it should be up further. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to arc dodge the dragon, but just barely. The problem is, depending on what happens with this other combat and how far he overruns or and all that, these paladins might just not be there. They might be far enough forward that he's out of arc. So I don't know why right. he isn't going up more. Right, and they're nimble, aren't they? Right, so he could... I don't know what all he could do, but he could do stuff. So, as Shannon, what are your priorities right now? Like, what are you trying to do here? Get those two tokens on the left and don't lose your two. Okay. So operation push past the middle line is no longer a thing. Is now yeah. operation just Pokemon catch them all. Yeah. yeah. Or at least uh -huh. or at least make him drop the, the two he's holding. Or at least, on, at least on make that. him drop the one, right? Oh that one he's not dropping. He's He's gonna hold yeah, that guy's, oh, that so guy's at fresh. least He's got in that one on that side of the board. He's he already did drop the two. Yeah. Right. Um, so at this point, we just need to we need to kill those paladins, pick it up, and not die. Yeah. <laughs> you maybe throw Grup at paladins. Uh, yeah, definitely throw Grup at some paladins to try to keep them off you. But I mean, yeah, you, only defense you, four. you want them to walk forward far enough so that the Mogwins can can come oh, in and take out the other passes next turn. Yeah, yeah. So spin luggets around, throw grub at Paladins, try to get all of your other stuff into the game, shoot everything at the dragon and still not kill it. Uh, yeah. You say that. You say that. No, I know, right? I know I mean, he's in cover. It worked against Julius. Uh, mob, mob pups don't care. Or, 
Yeah, mop up but the war trombones do. Yeah, war trombones do. But at this point, you could could you just like chaff up the other paladins with your trombones and not worry about it? I think you could chaff up both paladin regiments with um, what's her name right now, Grup. Grup, oh, that's true. I think if she charges if she that front it. unit, neither regiment is doing anything. Six, nine, yeah, she In can make snare. It. Weakness. Yeah. Yep. She might win that fight. <laughs> <laughs> Not long term, no. But just has to hold out for a couple of rounds. Oh, or you throw mob beasts in there? So we are down to twelve minutes on Shannon's clock in the bottom <laughs> of turn four. Uh I I, I I definitely don't want to see him clock out because, like, oh, he's, I do. He's played. He's played really well. No, I um, absolutely want the... to see Shannon get to a spot where he clocks out like next turn, and it just doesn't matter. I, I am a slow player, not in like an intentionally I slow play people. I'm just generally slow, and I tend to play armies that compete in all phases. Like even when I played dwarves, I had rangers plus volley guns plus shooting units plus combat units so it would it would be like from even before turn one i was having to make decisions about where things move shoot and whatever um so i was always slow and i'm always in danger of clocking out and even with that uh 70 minutes 1995 not including deployment because they blind deployed like, oh, that's come right. on man come on man <laughs> <laughs> at that point if you clock out you deserve it so I, I think at that point, I want him to be in an ultimately winning position, clock out, and like key to pull it back to a draw because of the clock out, because that would be hilarious. I want to see him clock out and just win. <laughs> like, oh, Keith right. gets two turns that Shannon Dude. doesn't do anything, and he still can't do it. Do your worst. Yeah. Bounce, right. bounce off of me. Like, right. once that dragon goes down, Keith's damage isn't very good. No, all you have left are Paladin Foot Guard. Actually, we're laughing about Paladin Foot Guard, but they're going to just one-shot some units. Like, these mob beasts? They can't stand sure. up to Paladin Foot Guard at this... Like... No. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> this, is, this is no way. <laughs> He's still fiddling with trombones. <laughs> he's just, I don't he's know just why the trombones are just dragon. spinning around. That's not that hard. Spin around, make sure the dragon can't land on you. Done. Yeah. This is where like UB's controls are slower than in person. Like in person, you get <laughs> right in person. You're few just... minutes, and your your muscle memory takes over, and you're able you're, to like move, picking up dice <laughs> while you're while you're turning units. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now in UB, you're mm -hmm. like, oh, all of this is so slow. Uh, all right. Okay, we have hidden all the individuals. Flush up against the unit so a dragon can't do a sneaky charge. The dragon may or may not have a charge on a trombone. I don't what, believe it does. Doesn't look if, that, not on the not on the side. That's less not. than three inches. Like right, like probably not. But um, I also feel like if I were Shannon, and Keith wanted to jump over my unit with tokens to hit trombones when there's another Maw Beast regiment yeah. waiting to, to get you, then please, by all means, right? Like, yeah. waste your fifth turn. Um, it it doesn't. Been, like, that charge is not been, legal. But It might have been kind of good for him yeah. to leave that open as yeah. bait. Whoops! Like, charge my <laughs> trombone. Right. Shannon might just be protecting his trombones out of habit at this point, which... Yeah. Oh, Still playing second like, edition. Hurt. Turn, turn six, doesn't bother moving anything. Just shoots with trombones, puts the dice down. Done. That's what he's going to have time for at this point. Right. Uh-oh. He, he just lost a bit of time because he's mob beasts. He's going to have trouble. He will, he, his initial move was just in the dragon's arc, so he's got to figure out how to do that. He can. I don't know why he keeps undoing it. But should he? <laughs> right now. Because again, like if the dragon jumps over, punches them in the front, doesn't kill them, okay, the dragon's just taking itself out of position to do anything useful the next turn. Uh, 
Because we've established that dragons can't kill mob beasts, is that why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have yeah, their chance. Okay. <laughs> All right. There's a sample size of one. <laughs> <laughs> You're basing all future evidences of this game, which is War Trombones. Uh, it's just how math two works. Turns. War did, Trombones did, take two turns Shannon to kill just dragons. not shoot? He oh, no, didn't bother trombones. shooting. It's both trombones. Oh, it's, it's both trombones on the dragon. Okay. Uh, he. And here's lightning. Oh, one hit, one move. did six. Oh, and then mob pups. Don't sleep on the trombones. <sighs> Like, it, here's the thing, right? We know this. Yeah, they got nerfed from second edition. But They're still fine. if you give them four or five turns of shooting unimpeded. Ooh, interesting. Yes. They will That's eventually. A couple more. I'm not damage. sure I would have done both. Okay, that's 13 damage. Dragon's in trouble. Like, if you just let that stuff free fire all game, it adds up. Uh, but then he rolled a three for but the nerf roll. Then he rolled a three. Well, he deserved yeah. that after some of those earlier nerf rolls. All right. But here's the Luggit with the Luggit gang with Elite and needing it. Um, all right. That puts the pallies up to. Yep. And then a seven rolled will take off those paladins that. over on the. Mm hmm. On the left. And you gotta overrun and it over to make it to the token. I mean that touches him. Yeah. That's it's three. That's, 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 Definitely. that's where you want to be. What he needed. Because, because now the, the paladins in the front can't get away from Magwins when they charge. Right. They'll still mm -hmm. be an arc. Whether or not he'll be able to see them around the building, I don't know. Uh, I think he can. I think he's still got the corner. Yeah, uh, that looks that looks like it. And that will take us to the top of turn five. Yeah, that was now Keith's, Keith's turn takes four minutes. Right. We're back to Shannon. I don't know. What does the dragon do? It's all about Well, I mean, it, I mean, you you have to get tokens away. Right? But the dragon in the front of Luggett's hindered isn't going to kill them. Uh -uh. And 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 at this point, like they can just sort of back up, back away from the dragon, shoot everything at him again, and dead dragon. Right. Um, so, like, like as we were saying, Shannon maybe doesn't, or yeah, Shannon maybe doesn't need to do much of anything else this game, other than hold on to tokens and back up. Okay, you still do. That's what's so important about. Over. That's what's so important about the small amount of concentrated shooting that yeah. got untouched is that that dragon without the war trombones and mop up damage on it is a rock. It has tons of options about how it positions itself to do good stuff. Right. Instead, it's a wounded beast on 12 damage that gets to try and do one useful thing before it gets dragged down. Like, and that's a huge situation change for that very expensive playing piece because those uh, war trombones have just been sitting in the middle of his army, free firing at anything that comes behind. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. dropped Julius. They've done a ton of damage to this one. It's mm -hmm. like, for me, those war trombones are MVPs almost at this point. No, the mob beasts. No, no. I, yeah. Um, my actual MVP I mean, is that Luggett gang on the left. Sure. I mean, those, those two... <laughs> Those the two war trombones cost 130 points, and they killed a 315 point model. So, the... which 315 point model that they've killed? <laughs> so uh, far, Julius. Cause they're, Julius, because they're going to get this yeah. dragon. Probably, yeah. Yeah, but so I Keith, also love. Keith still the... got 20 minutes to think about what he wants to do here in turn five, though. The Luggett gang that is almost single handedly winning the left flank is my other favorite. Right. <laughs> okay, right. this is an interesting dragon play. That sounds like the weirdest Craigslist, like, <laughs> person to person dragon play. Looking for, I'm looking for F for dragon play. <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm. 
and you show up and it's just somebody that wants to play a JRPG with somebody else or whatever. You Jake show up and it's Jake. Yeah. It's Jake. It's Jake. <laughs> oh boy. I think I like breathing on something more than I like fighting with the dragon at this point. Just because the paladins can kill those mob beasts. Yeah, but throwing the paladins forward with a token might tempt Shannon to kill that. Okay, so drop it and pass it off to the back unit. To the back one, right. Right. You're not getting across the board anyway. Right. Dude, Keith's the only unit left is going to be his thunder gun. <laughs> and the priest. And that's, and that's only because Shannon's clocking out before he gets that thunder gun. Yeah. I'm waiting for Shannon's next turn where all he does is shoot all of his guns at the uh, dragon and then pass the turn. I don't no, he's, think he's, he's that guy. I no, think he's, he's the guy he's that's going to fiddle till the end. He's, he's yeah. going to flank the paladins with those. With, it's with that Maglers. flank. And to make honestly, sure he holds those two, then he's going to kill the dragon. That's Shannon's thing. rabble haven't killed anything yet, right? No. No, his thunder gun have not. No. So depending on where that dragon ends up, maybe that's what he prioritizes is getting the point for that kill. Yeah, take, could, a, or, take another, or, another shot at them after they failed yeah. earlier. Or just run or them 10 just, inches straight forward. Right. And, and that gets flank, him on the other half of the table, which, which, which gets you a bonus point anyway. Whatever well, if, it takes if, to get him across the table. If you can get them across the table in some place where nothing can charge them, you also get the bonus point for your Thunder Gun unit not, not ending the game without any damage on them. Oh, it's without any damage? Yes. It's well, it's, it's two different things. One, are you always on your opponent's side of the table? And the other one is if you end the game with no damage on you. Oh, I thought uh, there was the one for being one is, alive. I didn't realize it was no yeah. damage. Yikes. Have no That's damage. hard. I mean, so it's, far these cyber okay units you, are undamaged, but... Right. It's it's okay if you take damage, if you heal it by the end of the game. Sure. You still get the bonus point. You can tell Mike plays undead and not <laughs> many of the armies that have bad access to heal. He's right. like, oh, it's fine if you take damage. You can just heal it by the end. Right, yeah. I'm over Walk here with Kingdoms of Men where like every point of damage sticks for the entire game. For the entire game. <laughs> right. like, you will never. Right. Whereas I'm over here just like, zombie walk it off. Shoot? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah no, I've been chip chip running three my unicorns lately one. and they all, it's like, oh, there's heal 15 right there. Okay. Jesus. You make me sick. <laughs> just life leech will drain life. Next turn, we'll do it again. We're fine. So, um... Okay. So he so he is trying to go in on the trombone. No, or not? I mean, now I want him no, to No, I think spike. that's a move 10 pivot breath. Pivot and breath. Now, yeah. I mean, the real game, as sort of whoever Snow Troll is, is saying, is it's no longer Shannon against... Uh, Keith, it is now Shannon against the clock. The clock, the clock yeah. <laughs> um. Yep. Um, interestingly, this position still puts... Oh! Yep. Did they I, have the distance to do that? Okay. Yeah, yeah I think so. Corner Why to not? corner. Corner to corner, they can make it. Although, now okay. you're throwing paladins into the woods. They're not really going to do much. But the dragon's in the flank. So now he pretty much has to shoot that dragon to death um, with everything he's got. Fine. Or He will. Um, Shannon's thunder gun unit is safely crossing the table. Dude, I want um, him to shoot it and block it out of spite with the yeah, dragon. But like, but like, check out this, this bullshit charge right here. Right? Like, put his individual there so he's hanging way off the corner so that he had space to do all the rest of that stuff. Although now he doesn't really need that. He could have just done a regular that charge. I think the unit was supposed... Oh, was the dragon still there? The dragon was still in the way. Right. So that keeps him from going to the other side of the priest, yeah? Oh, interesting. It looks like the dragon... Is the dragon going to shoot at these mob beasts instead of one of the looks trombones? Like That's a very like. brave dragon. To be like, I'll see you're shooting and raise you shooting at something else. Do dragons really only have breath eight? Yeah, right? Fireball. Oh, so these Fireball. mob beasts should absolutely have cover right now? 
from the woods, but they appear to not be playing it that way. Or they are. No, I'm confused. Oh, no, no. They do have 10 because it is just a shooting attack and they have 10. So okay. that's why he's re-rolling it for 10 dice instead of 8. Got it. Julius, Julius and Samacris have fireball. So. And this time they're catching the cover. Yep. So he so did nine. a point of damage. I'm sorry. Yeah, 10, 10 roll makes 10. 11. They're fine. I, which is why? not enough. Why, why is he doing that? I don't know. <laughs> As opposed to burning a trombone? As opposed right. to anything else. He's just going to get shot and die. Uh, I think these mob beasts are the biggest point. threat to his paladin foot guard that are holding the token. Might be why. Yeah. Ten hits. I can't even tell who's fighting right now. Oh, it's the guys it's on the, the left. Yeah, it's it's the two that actually matter. Uh, but only a five rolled will not get them. Uh, and now here's the paladins on the mob beast regiment. With elite. elite. <laughs> Five. Should be five runes yeah, at all twelve. We'll definitely pick them up. But that's fine. That's not really a critical combat. And it gives the other mobby something to do next turn. Even if right. they even if they don't kill him, even if he doesn't roll the dice, they're in the way. And it means you're that, that unit's not flanking your luggets with your two tokens next turn. You're missing right, so the con here. <laughs> the more units he gives for Shannon to charge, the more he's going to clock out. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> the more time you have Shane to go, is right. going to spend figuring it out. You give right, him like, choices in turn right. all five. The, all, the, all, the, all that he needs to do is, is kill those paladins on the far left, shoot the dragon to death, and, and that's it. Like, that's, and that's, the, and, oh, and, that, and, and then walk he's done. his rabble ten inches straight forward. Right. He, he needs to move a couple things, put a couple units in the way, and then walk off. Which you That's can it. easily do within six minutes, but we'll see. Well, in person we tournaments, I feel like I've played three turns in six minutes. <laughs> like those last three turns where you're literally like. Only four wounds on the luggets carrying the tokens. Only four. Yeah, his hits were good. Uh, and that is probably going to take us over to the speed round. All right, let's see it. That is Shannon's turn five. Yep, there's there's one charge. Right. That's all you got to do. Don't bother. Come on, Shannon, take that charge, else. flank the other guys, shoot everything at the dragon, pass the turn, three minutes done. Yep, and here comes the flank charge here, which will pretty much secure these two tokens for Shannon, whether um, he clocks out or not. Hmm. Especially if he overruns across the table. I don't know if how this event scored if that's necessary, but Yeah, no, it's it's it'll it'll double up your push scenario points for okay. having them across the table, same as standard push. Mm -hmm. Yep. Why are we rotating? Don't rotate, just run them forward. You don't have time. <laughs> Ten inches straight forward. You don't have time for this. <sighs> Right. You're not going to have a turn six, dude. Why are you bopping? <laughs> I think he's got plenty of time now. If he keeps it simple. These are such straightforward moves at this point. You gotta... True. And at this point, he's he's basically lining up to be like, if you happen to kill my, my unit there that's holding the tokens, then my Thunder Gun unit will come take sure. them back. Um, do they have Maybe. to be... Entirely I think it's entirely on. across. I think it's entirely across, and I don't think they're, they're really not. Across. Well, they're majority a, across. Sure, if he if on turn six he doesn't have to go rescue his tokens, he can just move them. If he's still got time, ninety pivot ninety right. move five. Uh, yeah, yeah, if he's still got right. time, he should have time. Come on, why right. is this rebel here, horde doing anything? Again, he's just putting him in position in case he has time in turn six and he needs to rescue his tokens. Like, that's it. <laughs> oh, but also, so you're right. Special. He doesn't really need need to do anything. No. And the luggets drop the tokens. So now Why? it kind of doesn't. Why? Because he's 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 got him beat with the tokens on the other side. Okay. Now Shannon has to both kill them 
and walk onto them to get them. Okay. okay he doesn't automatically sure. get them on a kill. Yeah, it's just that percentage play that, yeah. like, if you're sure. holding the tokens and he spikes a roll and kills you, yeah, I he guess. gets them. If he spikes a roll and kills you, he can still roll a one or a two. Uh-oh. And Shannon, what are you doing? You don't have time to mess up UB. Things, yeah. Yep. Just shoot the dragon to death, main chant your luggets, and... Get Grub everyone. in there. Get Grub Add in Grub there. to a fight. Oh, can Get... Grub... Grub needs to charge that priest. I don't think Grub could have... I don't think Grub can fit on the... Grub can add, gr- add, add Dread to both uh, combats there. Though. Wait, Grub, Grub has dread. dread? I think so, doesn't it? Doesn't she? I want to say... Let me check. I'll check. Yeah. No, doesn't. My bad. No. Nope. My bad. That would be Online. insane. N- 90 point Dread <laughs> individual with Ensnare and Duelist. Uh, so Too this much. is probably shooting, I'm guessing. This is uh, guns. Trombones did yeah. three. So three more, yep. Maw things. Mob mob pup launchers on the dragon. Come on, five hits. Why are we rotating? Oh, only one shooting. Got two, though. <laughs> oh. Interesting. Did he load mop pups onto someone? I, oh, I he, luggets. He, he loaded them onto the luggets, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's like, I've got that dragon dead already. Hope so. Uh, I mean, he's on a, <laughs> a, a two. Light, lightning, Bane Chant, what are we doing? Um, Bane Chant. All the Bane buffs. Chant. And probably and Bane Chant the, the Mob Beasts as well. No, nope. Bane Chant the Mob Beasts. Bane Chant yeah. the Mob yeah, Beasts. Yeah, Bane, Bane now... Chant the mob I think now that's Nerve all the, on the dragon. Here comes Nerve on the Dragon. A five. Is that a waiver? Five. A five plus 15. That's a 20. Oh, yeah. That's a 20. The dragon. Math is hard. All right. Here's your flank charge in the corner that's to 10. rescue these two tokens. And there's Vicious. Oh, they're Vicious. It does 12. Yep. So there's 12 wounds to start. And then the Luggets yeah, in the front. I mean, 12 hits. Yeah. No, he's got this. Bunch of... Elite re rolls only gets one more. Still 13. Looking for fives? No, looking for threes, Fours. right? No, oh, the crushing one? Okay. And then there's a 10, which will yep. take them up. So those those two tokens now thoroughly belong to Shannon. And do you overrun to make sure you're across? Yeah. That would be my play, yeah. Four and inches. There they go. Yep. So that's four scenario points. And he's still got two more combats to roll out. Uh, doesn't really need to roll any others other than the Thunder Gun yet, though. And there's the Maw Pups. Does two. I mean, if he's really um, maximizing points, you you try and save 15 seconds to pivot and move those. Right. I... Sure. Blade of Slashing doesn't hit. 11 hits will turn into you're six wounds right, with Kyle, Bane Chant. He, he made he the eight, just run him for 10 and 9. That will pick them up, right? Yeah. Yep. I mean... That will pick up the Thunder Gun unit. And That's now you run forward. Yeah. No, you don't run forward because you're not, you don't have, he dropped uh, the tokens. Oh, because you don't have the tokens, yeah. Don't run forward, Shannon. What are you doing? Right, just stay where you are and pick up the tokens again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, and I can run. going to be time. Yeah. We're, we should be diced out. Oh, apparently we have two seconds left. Okay. That's not true. He didn't actually roll the other combat, though. He didn't roll no. the other combat. He should be diced down. Yeah. But at this point, there there isn't anything Keith can do. Right. So you're saying there's a chance? So no. You're saying there's a chance? <laughs> like, so, I guess the only chance he has is if, if Keith kills these Maw Beasts and then turns and can somehow fit through to hit the... Luggets in the flank. He def- and then pick is up those Grub two tokens. Mighty? Grub's not mighty. Nope. That's easy. What are you doing, Shannon? You're out of time. No rotating. And now it's a front charge instead of a flank. So rotate in times out. All right. Sure. So that is we'll a clock it. out. Clock out and turn five. Oh, he's ignoring the mobbies and going straight for it. Okay. Yep, but that's going to make it a hindered front charge. Or uh, or, or now, he's he's letting him pivot out so that he can't he's get letting him. him. He's letting him fiddle. Yeah. yeah. Good guy, Keith, over here. 
is letting him take extra time. Yeah, maybe turn, maybe turn it off so that you can't corkscrew. Maybe in recompense for uh, sneaking an extra point of damage onto a unit and blowing it up. With yeah, it yeah, he did. He did cheat and kill a mincer. <laughs> Come on, Keith. This is the guilt. The guilt coming through. Maybe not. Maybe he's making him put it back. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, that is definitely all of his time. Either Keith will let him reform that unit with his last couple of seconds or won't. And then it'll be on to his turn six where discussing. Um, okay. Okay. I mean, I don't see... It takes some weird stuff for Keith to win this game, right? I guess if he gets a seven yeah. and those luggets are facing that way. Remember, there's no counterattacks here. Nothing right. else happens. Right. Here. Right. But the but the but the funny thing here is that if he doesn't move at all and Keith tries to charge and fit and get in the flank, he can't get in the flank because Grup might not be mighty, but you can't finish your charge on them. So what they might be discussing is that Shannon rolled a die yeah. to walk forward and then said, oh, no, wait, I don't want to walk forward. Which actually is better for Shannon because now there's no way, unless it goes to seven, that those Paladin foot guard yeah. are getting those two choke. Yeah, dude, I guess but, he, if it goes, but if it goes to seven, like, he's got it. them, kill them, pivot. And then walk on. Walk right. on, and, you win. Sorry for clocking out, Shannon. Like that's what it is. If if there was no clock out, he has a ton of units here to cover any weird. Right. Moves. If if there's no clock out, that play just doesn't work, and it's still dependent on it going to seven. Mm -hmm. Right. But but also but if like, if Shannon as, dropped the tokens and didn't pick them back up on this overrun, then killing that unit, killing those luggets, doesn't doesn't give Keith the two tokens. So there's no. there's no way for Keith to get the tokens. Turn seven. Turn seven. Sure. On turn seven. Assuming he but, kills But the him. thing is, the thing I'm looking at here is that as dominant as a position as Shannon was in, I mean, he literally, Keith has one unit and a, one unit and a priest on the board. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, he's down to what's basically like, I don't know, 200 and some odd points on the table. Mm -hmm. It is potentially going to win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, because of a because clock out. <laughs> Like, because he also has 12 minutes. Clock clock matters. Right. Like, Which Right. But but now and, he can't he can't charge those luggets now and though deciding, because he can't see them. What luggets can he not charge? Mm. The ones that walked in the woods because when he backs up originally and faced that way. Right. Yeah. Right. He was in combat. You're right. So it's right. back. We're oh, back out. you're right. You're right. We're back. Out. Uh, it still works if he kills these guys. Yes. And then just walks past Grup because Grup's yes. not mighty onto the token. Yeah. He just has to kill the mob beasts. Yeah. So kill the mob beasts, which is a, a taller order than flanking a luggage gang. But uh, still possible. Right. It's 12 dice, threes, and twos with elite. No, it doesn't have a lead anymore. Oh, this isn't the Aura unit. The Aura no, unit died. Still, died. 12 guys, threes and twos? <laughs> the unit that never did anything all game is the one that died. <laughs> they spent all game Which was the Thundergun unit. Which was the Thundergun unit. So, uh, Shannon gets another bus point for killing the Thunder, for killing Keith's Thundergun unit. Um, and I don't think, no, Keith's Thundergun unit did kill something. It, it tag teamed with the dragon to kill. It yeah. tag teamed the dragon, yep. Uh, so Shannon's hasn't. Shannon's is not, and that'll be the bonus point he's missing. He might also be missing the bonus point for being entirely on his opponent's side he of the is. table. I don't even think okay. he's majority on. Oh no, he is majority, but not entirely. Yep. Okay. So I don't I'm not, know how I'm that's not 100% certain. Yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% certain of that rule, but I think it's entirely on your opponent's side of the table. It should be. Um, so we are waiting to see what they do here. This is the top of turn six. Um, Shannon is out of time. Keith still has 12 minutes. Shannon has four scenario points to Keith's one, uh, but there are two tokens okay. standing on the field. Yep. It looks that like Keith, Keith is going for the kill the mob beasts on turn yep. seven, take the tokens. Yep. 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 Which he's looks like right now is just planning out to make sure he can do, and he definitely can. 
Uh, it's sketchy because there's a unit behind that he uh, can't get within. He can two charge inch. the he can't wizard get within an inch of. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he can he, just charge the wizard. If he kills the mob beasts, he oh, can just right. charge the wizard. You're right. That he doesn't have to stay an inch away from them. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Yep. That would be the right play. Because then you end on the tokens, whether There's you kill the wizard or not. No spell worth casting, so I don't know. Oh, okay. We're unnecessarily Bane, Bane, Bane Chan. Bane yeah, Chan double sixes. What do you mean Bring unnecessarily? Uh, he's crush one in the unit's defense three. He's not. Oh, he is crush one, yeah. Yeah, yeah those are the crush ones. So mm-hmm. Bane Chant kind of doesn't matter. Whatever. There's yeah, no such yeah. thing as an unnecessary Bane Chant. Well, especially when you roll two sixes on it. That's just great. It's inspiring. All right, let's see what he does. He's looking for threes to hit. Twelve Seven. dice. Seven. All right. Mm-hmm. Ooh, five. Wound, that is only five. That's going to bring him up to six. Yuck is right. That's not yeah. terrible, but he it's, needs it's all this. 12, 12, 14. Well, he could so. still spike the... Nope. nope. That is a four. Nope. We're done. I also like that that's the time I don't know who Dice Dad Steve is, but I like that he's just like, oh, he he did roll it, I'm out. That's that's the T.O. Dice Dad Steve is the T.O. Steve Forrester's watching this whole game, and then he's like, roll to to four, I'm out. (laughs) So that will bring us to the end of the game. We're not even bothering to roll for seven, I guess, which... Why bother? Yeah, he can, I mean, he can kill, uh, if there's that one kill points and these mob beasts put Keith into a different bracket, maybe. Maybe, yeah, I would have to look at the bracket. Maybe now. those mob beasts are actually enough for Keith to count as killing things. Okay, and it looks like they're checking. And again, these rabble are partially or mostly, but not entirely across. Right. Might be worth the point. I don't know how this is scored. Yeah, but Shannon's luggets with Keith's original two tokens are all the way on his side of the table. So it will be four points. It will be four points there. Mm-hmm. Game was. And insane. Shannon's original tokens are still on Shannon's half of the table, unclaimed. Keith, Keith, you had a chance to win it, which is insane. I did. I wasn't <laughs> expecting that at all. Oh, yeah. I, uh, at the end, I probably should have typed something. I was butt up. I, I told uh, after I killed the uh, killed the paladins with my luggets, I told Keith I was going to move forward. I rolled, yeah. move forward, and I was like, um, I don't have the tokens anymore. Yeah, uh-huh. it just stayed in place. So that's what the futzing around was. And I was like, you know, yeah, we figured that out. Yeah, we figured seconds, that one I didn't out. have yeah. enough time to think about it, so I should just take the roll, go forward, and basically mm-hmm. what we were looking at is if he killed the mob beast, we get a seven. Yep. He could have charged my he charged, wiz, yeah, we wizard, saw that. and, mm-hmm. and, yep. and yep. he picks up the tokens. So. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which which would have been amazing. Like, I'm sorry. It would have. Yes. Yeah. I really That's, wanted well, that to happen. <laughs> I mean, the way, oh my god, when he, the dragon on the right went into the mob beast and did whatever three wounds and didn't even waver them at the start, that was... Right. Yeah, life was rough for him. And then Julius, you know, I t- did... Whatever, it should have taken another round of shooting. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 And it's not even that much shooting, you know, like two trombones, but it's just, and then I mob pups maybe did a wound or two, but it's just crazy. Yeah. I was, I, I was I very mean, surprised. In the sample size of one, we've just determined that, um, you know, dragons are soft as baby shit and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and need it and need a buff. So it, was, okay. it was crazy dice. Um, yeah, I think I think we even specifically said he's not killing Julius with shooting this turn. Um, but but but, but, then, but then you did right. Well, no, didn't... I didn't expect to. Right, I was setting stuff up, trying to get a couple more wounds on him, and then uh, maybe he has to go into the mob beast or something. And to be fair, it didn't feel like the same turn. <laughs> 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 it was like 20 minutes after we said that, still during that Which turn. Which brings but, back to yeah. what I called on turn like two, or maybe it was three, I don't know, that Shannon was going to clock out and still win. Yeah. <laughs> and he did. It's too fidgety, at least at times, right? Like I kept nudging units. What's the angle? Mm-hmm. Uh, tabletop mm-hmm. is easier in some ways, I think, because you just, you agree that it'll make it and you just go, right? And then trying to get that last half millimeter to line up units. So I you, think I spent like 30 seconds when I would charge trying to get my unit lined up exactly. So Shannon, are you saying spot. you don't have clock problems on the tabletop either? I don't. I usually, I get my six turns in and I have like 
10 seconds to spare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, smooth, a smooth 10 seconds. Hoping for Funny. no time seven. Hey, if you're going to charge me $50 to go to an event, I'm going to make use of all my time. That's the way I always say. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I actually have to run. I apologize, but it was a great game to watch. Uh, it was yeah. Thank you, sort of insane. It was pretty um, insane. It's pretty insane. So I will yeah. leave it up to the experts to break down what actually did or didn't happen. <laughs> I don't know who fun. you think this is. <laughs> See y'all. Um, yeah. So that was that was a that was a very entertaining game. Very well played uh, by, by both of you. Congrats to Shannon, of course. Uh, keep uh, you know better luck next time. Um, it's, I mean, it's hard. It's, it's hard to play Alpha Strike. Sure. So, yeah. Do. Like it's 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 hard to play an elite Alpha Strike list against. Um, you know, goblins with lots of drops and lots of errors mm -hmm. and lots of angles and a player that knows how to light to, to layer his line and hold back all his shooting to concentrate on yeah. one thing. And like, yeah, after, after the second turn, when uh, you'd lost, I think what Samacris and one of the dragons, we were like, okay, well, we weren't expecting that to be the, the state of the board at the end of turn two. Um, yeah. How much did your, did your general plan change? at the top of turn three. It seemed like the first couple of turns you, you went pretty quick and you got to turn three and that, that might've been the turn you spent the most time in kind of reassessing like, okay, now what do I do? Uh, what yeah. Kinda, what were you, what were you thinking at that point? There's a lot of unknowns at that point. Cause you know, I saw the angle originally my plan was to be patient, you know, to dance around him on the right and hold him back while I won the left and then moved on. Um, sure. None of that happened because Sam or Chris died on the charge which I was not expecting. And then right. um, the uh, dragons didn't kill the mob beasts because um, I saw that charge and I was like, well, you know, the dragon would hopefully waver or kill them because they're only 12, 14. And then they'd be blocked in such a way that he may not be able to get them out for the other ones to charge. And that gives Julius time to right. you know, either circle around or hit other things and hold them back. And getting rid of those two mob beast regiments was my main goal. You know, right. whether breathing on them or charging them. But then when I did three hits on 10 attacks and only did like yeah. two wounds, it was, yeah. right. that was really bad. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think you, you checked uh, Julius's line of sight. Right. Because if Julius and, gets in on there too, it's a different it. story. That was the yeah. thing. I was hoping that he would bounce. Julius could flank. Both mobbies would be dead. And then I'd turn to face the Luggets and he'd have to choose whether mm -hmm. he wanted the Paladins in the rear or the Dragons. Mm -hmm. And then I would have felt a lot better. But yeah, that would have been a good right. spot. Not with Chin <laughs> shooting, apparently. Sure. But I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's comforting to know that even if that had happened, he still would have shot me off the board with those insane rolls on five. He got like eight wounds on five. So I was like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So, but he did give me a really good moment when he pinned the phalanx guy because that was like, I still had plenty of time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'll fly this guy in turn. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm letting myself get charged by the Pathfinder phalanx guy, which was a <laughs> huge mistake on my part, but apparently it was all <laughs> according to plan because it worked out. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. That was that was a brain it's, fart right there. It's also, also interesting too. Like the Samarchus made me change my play as well because initially I was thinking, and, and where you move the dragon, because initially I thought I would probably just wheel out, give you those two tokens on the left. Mm -hmm. And try to move my luggets and mobbies back to the center. Yeah, but then that's what I... when you sent the dragon down, mm -hmm. and I thought, okay, like you said, I'll pin him with my phalanx unit, and then um, I'll see if I can deal with Samacris and hold up those units. I still thought I'd probably run my mobbies over to deal, you know, if I could get the mobbies in behind Julius, is kind of what I was thinking on turn three. But just the way things came out. I ended up just leaving everything over on the left because then it looked, mm -hmm. once Samarchus died, right, I realized, oh, I can probably pick up those two tokens. Uh, and then if I can get those across middle, if I can keep you from getting three across the middle, then I could still win four three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah Samarchus dying over there definitely definitely shifted the game the, the way we were watching it too. We we're like, okay, so now it's really no longer a race to get to the middle. It's, it's going to depend whether Keith can get your two tokens away from you in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there was a big moment where there was like, does Julius go help the middle or does Julius bail out the left? Mm -hmm. yep, yep, we were having oh, that yeah. same conversation as you were making. And I was that like, decision. go left, go help the left. Yeah. Uh, need it. Yeah, yeah. I thought about that, but then I was you like, you just needed him to be in both places and also not get shot right. off the board. Right. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Away from the trombones would have been the better, I, the the better decision. 
in retrospect. Yeah, we were we were discussing whether Shannon's MVP units were the Luggets all the way over on the left that that ended up picking up the tokens off the Paladins, or the the Trombones in the middle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that was. I rolled like ten just hits. So just so everyone knows, bottom. trombones are terrible. You should play rock launchers. Yeah, trombones <laughs> are garbage. Bobbers. Why That's would you ever take garbage. them, Shannon? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. All right. Uh, do we have any other questions? I feel like there was there was one thing. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up. Uh, I think you may have killed a oh the mincer with with, with 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 paladins that shouldn't have. Oh, uh, no. because, what happened? Because well, um, because you did uh, you counted it were, as four wounds. They were uh, crushed too. Were they were crushed too? Yeah, they were the. Crushed too? They he lowered the defense and gave them two handed weapons, I believe. That gives them crushed side. one. Oh. oh, oh! Did I did I get oh, right. the wrong on that? And you mm -hmm. did you did four wounds on fours, but only three on fives, right. and then rolled a seven, which would have been a ten, and their dash eleven. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then, so, then, so then we were sitting there looking around, and it's like, yeah. well, he didn't roll bane chant because he healed the dragon instead, and there's nothing over here that has brutal oh. or dread, or so we couldn't figure out where the other point came from. It was like, uh, prob yeah. probably straight up. There. It was straight up cheating. It was all yeah. No, we, we both thought yeah. it was crushed too. I didn't even think about it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. Okay. Uh, I think that was that was the only question that came up that, that we were like, we think that that might have been mm -hmm. just a just a miscount. It, it um, was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. That's fine. Things happen. Yeah, it happens. Yep. Uh, all right. I don't think I don't think we have anything else. Do you have anything else? We're good, we right? Okay. Well thanks. Thanks so much guys for, for coming on and letting us watch the game. That was that was again a very well played game for both you guys. Super entertaining. Uh, thanks, thanks so much for for letting us watch and broadcast it. I appreciate it. Congrats to uh, Shannon on the win, uh, and uh, good luck to both of you in the final round of the tournament. Uh, it's Sunday, so we should be finding out pretty much any time. Well, I guess as soon as you guys put your results in, we'll probably find out what the final round pairings look like. Um, next week, uh, we will pick a match from the final round to broadcast, likely the top table match. Uh, whoever ends up being on top table, I think that's pretty well set at this point. But we'll see how it goes. And unless there's some sort of scheduling issue, that'll probably be the match that we try to get for you next week. So pay attention and look for, for that broadcast announcement. Um, and I think that's all we have for this time. So once again, uh, thanks to Kyle and Britton for commentating. And thanks to Shannon and Keith for letting us uh, watch their game. Uh, and thanks to everyone uh, at home out there uh, watching us. Until next time, I'm your host, Mike Atkins, saying you stay safe out there. And we will see you next time on Dash 28 Live. Bye, everybody. Take care. Thanks. Bye.